This month, Streaming Things is brought to you by Chester Copperpot, Jillian Morgan, Aaron Layton, Ghost, Andrew Gray, Casey McCain, Crystal Trujillo, Emmy, Jeanette Murphy, Enza, Jen Robinson, John Collins, Kalisha Reeves, Kate, Kiki Newton, Stanton, and Valerie. Harry Potter. Such an honor. Welcome back. My name is Chris. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, continuing our Harry Potter marathon with The Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah, baby, we're going to get some sexy prisoners in this one. It's a regular old, like, too hot for TV Harry Potter, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that's what it's like at all. Oh, did I watch the wrong movie? I think you did. You the must D- have watched Denis Villeneuve's Prisoners. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's not it either. I remember the D in Dementors meant something. Yeah, that's right. They sucked your... Soul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you creating a porn parody right now as we speak? At, as at creating it right now. <laughs> I've had the drafts written for months. Oh, no. <laughs> the Dementors are coming. I can make you bottle <laughs> fame. <laughs> that, that monologue will still be in there. <laughs> bro, bro, glory. That's in the Philosopher's Stone, Steve. So if you are new here, we have been covering Harry P all month, uh, just awaiting the droppage of The Last of Us. When you call it Harry P, you're really getting my hopes up for this porn parody I'm thinking of. Harry P. saying. (laughs) So The Last of Us, we got our first official trailer. I didn't even watch it yet. I'm not going to lie to you, Steve. I watched it. But on January 15th, we get that show and we're going to start. That's going to be our next big thing. So hopefully I have full faith in Craig Mazin and HBO. Um, So I think it's going to be a wonder to behold. So that's our next plan. Because our listenership is probably 60% higher um, no, no, no. Over double. So 200% higher, <laughs> but like 60% down. Uh, when we're not covering a big show, our listenership drops and we're, you know, no matter what we're doing. So mm-hmm. I'm excited for the last of us for sure. Yeah. We should have covered Wednesday, a show that I binged and adored, but has recently become the most watched thing on Netflix ever. I think it beat out stranger things. I don't believe it. I, nobody saw that coming. I don't believe that was on nobody's bingo card. <laughs> I don't believe like that's you literally that. think it's untrue. I literally think that's untrue. Really? You're the only person in my life who has ever seen that show. Did you know a lot of people that watch stranger things? I know a ton of people who watch stranger yeah. things, but I, you were the only person who I know in my personal life that has watched Wednesday. <laughs> really? <laughs> and when you're like, yeah, beat out stranger things. I'm like, ha, <laughs> Good one, Chris. No, I'm like, oh, that's what they're saying. And I'll see when that's what Netflix says. I'm like, well, Netflix also doesn't release their numbers. So that's true. I don't trust. Oh, them you all think the they're time. just like it's doing really good? Yeah. Investors. Literally every new show that comes out is like the most watched show on Netflix ever. Your numbers are down, Netflix. I don't believe. You. I will say this: <laughs> as someone who's a little more chronically online than you, because of my like TikTok thing. Mm-hmm. It is like there are hundreds of viral videos, mostly recreating the Jenna Ortega dance scene from yeah. like episode four or five or whatever. Um, yeah, I've seen those. It does seem to be like a widely watched show for yeah, like the, from the from the memes. I'm mostly kidding because I can see a lot of because I know Sabrina is a huge thing on that show, and I see a lot of yeah. on Netflix, and I can see a lot of crossover with that demographic. Yeah, it's really like the Riverdaleification of the Adams family is what yeah. that show is. But unlike Riverdale and Sabrina, I really, really liked it. Um, Jenna Ortega is fantastic. And anyway, I'm just saying from like a, from a crusty old SEO perspective, maybe we should, <laughs> that's what's the, it's hard to predict. Somebody messaged me and said, uh, I wish you'd recovering Wednesday or what you should or something like that. Cause I may, I'm on Instagram now at movies, Art therapy. So some, a lot of people from the, that listen to the show, DM me, um, haven't got any D picks yet. Just letting you all know, but, uh, keep them coming. <laughs> they're open. <laughs> um, I, I was talking to them and I was like, it's really hard for us to dedicate ourselves to a show, um, because it's really scary. Cause yes, most likely we'll get more listeners than ever before because people really like it when we hyper-focus, but at this, if it's a failure, if it's something people are not into, then all we do is alienate our, if it's our loyal core like. or even worse, if it's something we don't like, yeah, then we're just going to shit on something. Some people like, mm-hmm. uh, so it's really scary because when we started Str- stranger things, it was season two. So it was something we already knew that we loved, you know, like, I don't think we've ever, 
House of the Dragon is a, a Game of Thrones offshoot, something we already knew that we loved. Uh, and then Rings of Power was kind of a risk, even though we did love yeah, Lord we of the Rings. we were worried about that. And that didn't go super great. Like, you know, um, we had a few people that thought we were kind of shitting on the show. And, you know, uh, we ultimately got through that and had a good time. But that was more of a struggle than we're used to. And so that's the risk that we take when we pick a new show. So yeah. it's tough out here navigating these waters, man. Hell yeah. But anyway, all that is to say, look forward to The Last of Us dropping on January 15th. I've never played the game. I have about mm. 40 days now to to beat it. I just beat God of War Ragnarok. Uh, I'm obsessed with it, so I'm like 100 percenting it for no have, reason. You don't have 40 days to beat Last of Us. You have like 10 because that's when Witcher comes out. and you're. That's what I'm Witcher scared again. about. <laughs> yeah, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt update is uh, December 15th, 14th. Yeah, you've got like 10 days. <laughs> but I think I could do it. So that's Last of Us coming soon. But right now, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. But we got some cool, it's been a fun week, right? Everybody's Spotify wrapped mm -hmm. uh, figures came in. Absolutely. And uh, a lot of people were sending us uh, us in the top five, sometimes number one. Everybody else needing to listen to us a little bit more. Sometimes <laughs> it was two or three. Yeah, it was really, really cool kind of getting to see everyone you know, sending us their top fives and where we ranked in those top fives was really, really fun. Uh, a, a really cool way to engage. Spotify did this really cool thing. I did not know they did. I think they started it this year. They made a wrapped specifically for podcast creators. So this show, Streaming Things, got our own wrapped and it had some really cool information um, that I kind of wanted to share with you guys up at the top because it's really cool and it, it just kind of goes to show just how awesome you guys are as listeners and we're so thankful to have you um and this has been a really really good year for us it has it has been a very good year so i'm going to read some of these stats you ready chris i'm ready did you know that we created 6,878 minutes of new content <laughs> when you say it like that it sounds psychotic <laughs> it feels like it uh, that's 99% more than other creators in the TV and film category of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I think we make too much shit. <laughs> I've felt every bit of 8,000 minutes. Can you, can you, can you guess what our most popular episode was? This uh, year? easily. I what? think it would be the finale of stranger things four. You were correct. That is a uh, piggyback. Mm -hmm. It was our most downloaded, uh, uh, episode by a mile. Uh, I think it was like 400% more downloads than yeah. our average. Uh, this show is, her is heard in 92 countries. Enza. Enza. <laughs> she's like, I represent everywhere, not the USA. She's, she's our global market. <laughs> our top five countries are the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and Germany. Germany's Germany coming in, in hot. Yeah, Germany coming in hot. Oh, I take that back. So piggyback. No, my <laughs> Sorry. The piggyback did 999% better than our average episode, mm -hmm. which that's pretty funny to me. <laughs> uh, here, let's, this is a cool set that I thought was really, really neat. Our podcast was in, was in the top 5% most shared globally in the world. That's crazy. Isn't that nuts? Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. I think that's a lot of people who are sharing our, cause it says like 34% is over text. And so I think that's people like, hey, listen to these guys talk about Stranger Things. Look at these nuts. jag -offs. Look at these jag -offs doing awful Russian impressions. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we I are love the, podcast. We're in the top 5% most followed podcasts on Spotify. That blows my mind just so much. Uh, but this, this is what I thought was fun. So our listeners, you guys have a personality, according to Spotify. Ooh. Uh, our listeners are called enthusiasts. They are stream fiends. Like your listeners are super fans. When their favorite podcast releases a new episode, they are among the first to know going above and beyond to show their support. And that is so true. Go you stream fiends. Awesome. Stream, I already knew that. The stream fiends are off. Awesome. With your help, we charted into four different charts. We uh, peaked at number eight, I assume in all of Spotify. Wow. That was our highest amount. And that's amongst like your last podcast on the left, your, 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 your Joe Rogan's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is insane. Um, we are the t in, in the top 10 podcasts for eleven over 11,000 people. We're a top five podcast for over 7,000 people. And we are the number one podcast for 1,783 fans. So it's thank you guys. Basically our patrons. Yeah. 
<laughs> so thank you guys. I just wanted to share that stuff at the top because this was a really, really good year for us. And those were some really interesting stats because over the summer we were super enthused, like, yay, our numbers are growing. But now that we're at the end of the year, we're like, okay, we're getting comfortable where we're at. So to get that, uh, those type of stats was yeah, like it's really good, humbling. Like, oh yeah, it's this a good carrot a really on a stick, year. you know, because uh, yeah. we just do our, we do our better help ads uh, because we like mental health. Right. But at mm-hmm. the same time, it's like mine declines at times. And sometimes I'm like, is this really, am I doing any good here? Am I doing any good here? So something like that is really good to see. It kind of bolsters my uh, willingness to keep working this hard throughout 2023. Um, and I would like to do more, to be honest with you. It kills me that I can't cover all of these shows. I've, I have watched a ridiculous amount of movies and TV this year. Um, upwards of 230 films, I think this year, over a hundred new releases in 2022 and at least 20 like series premieres which is a lot of time. And I've only been able to talk about a little bit of them because it's like, well, A, Steve has to edit and do a lot more work on whatever I want to talk about. So I have to pick very carefully. I can't just record myself willy-nilly and post it, Steve. Uh, (laughs) But I would like to, like, I would love for this to be a full-time thing, you know, where we have multiple different RSS feeds dedicated to different shows. and, And Steve and I would gladly spend nine or 10 hours every day working on this stuff and posting on 17 different social media things and, and really diving deep stream stranger things style into, you know, a dozen different things. Uh, but unfortunately we're, we're nowhere near being able to quit our day jobs, but we are, uh, we have reached the point where we are just un, unbelievably grateful. And we've had, I don't know, I would say hundreds met hundreds of like parasocial close friends, Um, all of you in the discord, but even a lot of people that are in my DMS on Twitter and Instagram on a daily basis. And, uh, I don't always respond in a timely way, but it it always makes me smile. Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you. This is just our way of expressing gratitude and our little end of the year stats that we got. It's really fucking cool. Really fucking cool. So So, thank you guys. Yes. Thank you. Continue to interact with us. You can email us at any time at streamingthingspod at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at stream thing pod. Um, I'm like I said, I'm on Instagram and TikTok and stuff like that. Steve is on uh, Twitter at Steve may 13. Um, and I'm also on this Instagram. Are you? Yeah. It's S underscore may zero five. If you want to see pictures of my dog. If we're plugging Instagrams now. And DM me if you'd like Steve's <laughs> phone number. It's not a big deal. I'll yeah, just give it to you. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Not I'll, a big deal I'll at all. I'll just block it. So right now. We're <laughs> <laughs> oh, but well, one thing we should plug, we are, we are starting to do more YouTube shorts. So, yes. Yeah. We're, we're trying to figure out um, YouTube, the YouTubes. Um, and we don't have our own URL yet, but it, the link is in our link tree and our other socials. And I think there's probably one in the show notes as well, I would imagine. Right, Steve? Sure. <laughs> maybe, I'll maybe not check that. But you can't just go to YouTube slash streaming things yet. Um, but if you search it, we'll be there for show. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now oh, we should also mention something, a huge elephant in the room. Oh, the Andy's not here. One. <laughs> 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 oh, there we go. I always hit the fucking hit the scary, scary one. one. There we go. It is scary that Andy's not here. Uh, Andy's not here. He's on vacation. He's in the mountains of Tennessee, I believe, but you can't go looking for him because he'll be back by the time you hear this. I think, um, <laughs> don't go hunting for Andy in the woods. Uh, Andy will not be here for this or in a couple of days when our evolution episode drops. Uh, he won't be for that either. Cause we're doing them both in the, the magic of, of editing today. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Andy's out having a good time gallivanting. So it's just Steve and I, which is sad because I think Andy agrees that Harry Potter and the prisoner of Azkaban is the best Harry Potter movie. I think he agrees with me on that. And he's our resident Harry P expert. So yeah, I'm not going to be able to point to Andy like, and that character's name is uh, Google flu. I love Google flu. <laughs> uh, but today we're covering Harry Potter and the prisoner of Azkaban uh, directed by the legendary Alfonso Cuaron. I think I did a good job with that. One of my Impression. favorite directors. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm 99% sure this is legitimately the best Harry Potter movie, but I am willing to admit I'm a little bit of a douchebag. I'm a little pretentious. <laughs> and the fact that this particular film was directed by an auteur, mm-hmm. uh, it might elevate it in my own mind and I might look for details. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I, I, yeah. I'm just being honest. Like I mean, that his, might be a thing. His style is definitely catered more towards yourself and people like us. I, I believe so. He's directed such movies as one of my favorite movies of all time is Itu Mama Tambien. And I know I didn't pronounce that correctly, but I, I adore that movie uh, with Diego Luna's in it, Steve, you should check it out sometime. Mm. Um, but also Roma gravity, uh, just some, some legendary uh, children of men, just children legendary films. 
Uh, and then uh, out of nowhere, this third installment in the Harry Potter franchise, and he directs the shit out of it. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, but before we get in too deep, if you're new here, you don't know this, but we're about to tell you, we're not going to be referencing she who must not be named at all. We here at Streaming Things stand uh, behind the trans community. We are very much in the camp of do whatever the fuck you want, be who you want to be, as long as that makes you happy. Uh, and so we will not stand for any kind of prejudice or hate here on the show. But we do think Harry Potter is a good story that has meant a lot to millions of people over the decades. And so we thought it was still worth doing this marathon on our show. But we want to say that right at the top. Right. That's right, baby. By the way, I also thought it was funny. This is one of the shorter movies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah, at a brisk uh, two hours and 20 minutes. Yeah, 142 minutes. It's actually the third shortest. Uh, Order of the Phoenix and Deathly Hallows Part 2, ironically, oh, are both shorter than this movie. Uh, but the first, it's shorter than the first two. Chamber of Secrets, the worst movie in the in the franchise, in my opinion, is the longest for no reason. It's wow. nowhere near the longest book. It's like the It's one of the shorter books. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the first two books. It's one of the shorter ones. 161 minutes, Chamber of Secrets. 152 with Sorcerer's Stone, and then 142 with Prisoner of Azkaban. So that was one thing to look forward to as I watched that and evolution today. <laughs> oh, you watched both of them today? I did. Man, so, powerhouse over here. So you know how I stand. This is my favorite by by a mile in the Harry Potter franchise. What are your what's your experience with Prisoner of Azkaban? So with you know, you know, all of these movies, guys, I have only seen the movies once each, right? So I'm coming into this having not seen many of these since they were in the theater. I literally saw this one in the movie theater. It was the first Harry Potter I actually worked because it came out in 2004. It was I was, 2004, right? I was yeah. working in the movie theater. I was a, a fresh young lad in the in the workforce. Young lad. Uh, I, I took a girl there to see this movie because I was interested in her. And I'm like, she loves Harry Potter. Let's go watch She Harry went Potter. with you? Like she knew that? She was with you. Mm -hmm. oh, she wasn't just there, and you were like, "Hey, right? Can I sit here?" Yeah, <laughs> it didn't work out for me, but, <laughs> but that's how I saw this movie. You said for the first Leviosa, time. didn't you? I did, and she was like, "It's Leviosa." <laughs> uh, it's actually the opposite. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why you didn't like her. Yeah. Um, but no, like this is this is kind of a blast to to, to watch again. It's definitely of the three because I'm I'm gonna order these as we go through because I've only seen them all once. Yeah, you're like you get a fresh them. like reevaluation of everything. Yeah, and so this is definitely my favorite one of the three we've watched so far. Okay, uh, it just feels different. There's. I don't know. There's a sense of danger going on. I think it looks better. It's like the best looking movie so far. It also has fun in interesting ways. Um, and it, 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 it moves briskly for the most part. Like I think the editing is so much better. Like you get like yeah. among many things, but you get a real sense of them. Like when they go to the different classes, we like, we talked about it when we covered chamber of secrets, it was kind of just like, Oh, now they're here. Whereas in this movie, you got a sense of like these little transitions. Like he would cut Alfonso, if I, if I may call you that he would cut outside to like a His dement friends call him the Fonz. Yeah. The Fonz cut outside to like a Dementor robe kind of trailing at the top of the screen above some grass and the grass would like crisp and get covered in ice. Mm -hmm. Um, or he would cut to show the passage of time. He would cut outside and see the snow melting off all the trees. And you would see like the whomping willow shake itself off. And it's like, Oh, it's becoming spring now. Mm -hmm. And then it would cut back inside the school, a little shit like that, where it was like, Oh, I can track that a month or three has passed yeah. rather than chamber of secrets. It just cuts to the great hall and like the snacks are different themed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's the first movie so far that I think really introduces, this is the first movie that begins to feel a little more adult. Like they're still fun to be had, but they introduced two really, really great um, adult characters, uh, Professor Lupin and Sirius Black. And you get in, there's David Thewlis and, and Gary Oldman. So it's like, holy yeah. shit. Just amazing actors. And they really add a sense of realism and stakes to the movie. Mm -hmm. Like it's just nice to have a professor um, of defense against the dark arts that isn't a total tool you know? Sure. <laughs> and, and then just the added like, Oh, serious black he's coming to get you, Harry. And the dementors are this constant presence that are always looming in Hogwarts. So you just, this, the sense of danger is just always at the school in the way that the other two weren't necessarily the case. And I think that that it was intentional with Lupin, like she must not be named was, was kind of shooting for like a, Oh, I've done so much with this teaching position. It's always the villain now. Uh, or at least a douche. 
Mm-hmm. And so, well, he was actually a straight villain, terrible person. Oh uh, yeah. As far as Lockhart, Gilroy Lockhart. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was like a, a, a red herring in this, in this movie. But any who's yeah. So we both love the movie. I'm really excited. This is my favorite. Let's dive right in. Uh, it opens with Harry doing magic in the summer. I talked about it in the last episode with Chamber of Secrets. Lumos Maxima. Yeah, that's illegal. What are you doing, Harry? Breaking the law. He's trying to read. He's over there doing his best Judas Priest impersonation. Breaking the law. Breaking the law. Is that Judas Priest? I think it is. Breaking the law. Breaking, Breaking the, the law. law. Did I just teach you a music fact? Uh, maybe. Oh my goodness. Check that out. It Enza. Is Judas Priest. Good job. Laugh at me again. Discord. <laughs> I'm a source of mirth in there about my lack of 80s music knowledge. Uh, yeah, Lumos Maxima. I guess he's doing like a really bright wand light. And he's reading a book, ironically, called Extreme Incantations. Like, I like incantations, but what I get nervous about is extreme ones. Yeah, that's it's like a, the difference between Doritos and Extreme Doritos. It's, it's the, a, a cavern. <laughs> <laughs> a cavern? A cavern is distance. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what I was going with. <laughs> I went to say vast. It was a lot, uh, but what a nerd studying in the off months. You know, you ever have one of those friends, you go over their house sometime in late September and they're just uh, getting a, an early syllabus head start. I've already no, read my books for me neither guys. because those people don't have friends, Steve. Got them. <laughs> now hit the scary one. <laughs> I got to put a fucking button on this thing. But Uncle Vernon keeps storming in because he just smells magic's afoot. He does not like that shit. Not one bit. Mm-mm. But uh, Harry's too quick for him. It's lighting up the whole neighborhood, though, in his defense. That yeah. means if if yeah. Vernon's trying to sleep, I get it. It looks like a rave's going on in there. I get it. If I was sleeping and this kid just kept lighting up his Fortnite TV screen and would turn it off, I would get upset, too. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to be in there sleeping. Lights out, baby. It's he was a little nicer to Harry in this movie. Like, not really, but kind of. <laughs> Compared to uh, what's your name, Mar- Marge? Aunt Marge. M- Marge is a horrible witch. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, Harry goes downstairs. He needs Vernon to sign a form. We don't know what, but it looks like some kind of school permission slip. And he says, uh, "Later, maybe, as long as you behave." You right? Behave, and that's what I mean. He's like a little nicer. He's, he's brusque, mm-hmm. uh, and we know about his past history of abuse. But at the same time, in this moment, isolated. Not too bad. Uh, Aunt Marge comes in. She, I assume it's Uncle Vernon's sister. Yeah, she loves Dutters. Dutters is just sitting there watching TV, not even paying attention to her while she kisses and dotes on him. Are you, I'm sorry. Is Dutters an official nickname for Dudley? Uh, according to Aunt Marge, yeah. Oh, That's what she, she called oh, him. Oh, I yeah. didn't write that down. Okay. She's like, oh, Dutters. <laughs> she gave him the Lord, the night of kisses. What One, uh, oh yeah, she did. One, uh, one thing I loved about this set dressing is there is literally a TV in every corner of their house now. Yeah, Dudley's obsessed. And that's his characterization is he's basically me, which I take issue with. <laughs> Someone who's always watching TV and is very cute. People call Dudders. That's me, baby. But Aunt Marge is like, as she sees Harry. It's like, oh, you're still here? Are you getting beaten at school? You should get beaten Yeah, there's school. a line where she says, because uh, he she he, she asks Uncle Vernon where he's at. And he's like, Saint, uh, I wrote it down somewhere because that's, that's a little bit ways in here. But Saint something, like it's a boarding school. And she's like, oh, do they use the cane there? And she looks at Harry and he's like, oh, yeah, I've been beaten loads of times. So often. <laughs> it also characterizes Marge. She has 12 dogs. I assume no husband or kids, right? So she's she's just a, one of those people. Now, animal people are generally generally pretty kind, usually. Yeah, uh, but typically. that's that's Marge. But 12 dogs? Then you start to get in the crazy town, right? Mm-hmm. So Marge's got 12 dogs. By the way, she looks over at Petunia. And again, we're from the United States. I apologize to anybody o- over the pond, across the pond. Uh, but it, she looks at Petunia and says, excellent nosh. And I had to Google it. I thought nosh was like a dish, perhaps, like the beans and toast thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not. It's like a slang for food in general. So she just looked mm. at petunium and was like, great food. tasty food. Um, tasty made, generic you a, dish. You made a great meal. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what nosh is. Uh, she gives brandy to one of her puppies. Ripper. Ripper. That's right. Um, and that's right. He, uh, Vernon says it's a fine institution for hopeless cases. The boarding school that he's sending Harry. She asked, uh, oh, St. Brutus. That's right. Do they use the cane there? Oh, I've been beaten loads of times. And then she says, excellent. Is this uh, when she starts like uh, uh, talking smack about Harry's parents? Yeah. She's, she's like, like, what hey, about the dad? Is he a drunk? Is yeah. he a loser? And he blows up on her about the drunk. He was not a drunk. You're a liar. And she kind of chastises him there. Uh, and then she's, it's not the dad anyway. It's the mother. It's the same thing with dogs. When there's something wrong with the bitch, 
<laughs> and I was like, oh, whoa. Whoa. Aunt Marge. So Harry goes full Willy Wonka on her mm-hmm. and she he, he he engorges her and she floats out the window into the sky. Large Marge floating in the sky. That's right. Vernon's hanging onto her for dear life. But then at one point she looks down comedically and goes, don't you dare. And he lets go. He's like, I can't Sorry. help you. I'm out. <laughs> can't help you. Me and Ripper, he- we're out of here. She, I mean, she's got some pretty excellent propulsion if propulsion under her. If she's mm-hmm. able to lift Vernon up and assumedly yes. she would have taken him with her. He's a heavy man. <laughs> and Dudley's still watching TV throughout all of this. Oh, Dud- Dudley's not famous. Can't be pulled away. From, I assume that's Doctor Who. Uh, I wasn't actually watching. I didn't pay. I, I didn't, didn't even see it. I'm just, I, I assume, thought it was they're like, British. I assume. I thought it was like a variety show type thing. It's probably something dumb. I yeah. think there was like, like Survivor season going three. On. It's definitely Survivor season Survivor. three. Someone's getting voted off the island. Yeah, he's I, like, oh. guys, turn it down. <laughs> They're about to put their torch out. Um, what about the weak, weakest link someone off the show? Good boy. Good boy. Harry storms off, kicks his dresser. Uh, there's a, a moving picture of his parents there, a literal moving picture. Uh, and then Harry leaves with Marge. You can see Marge floating in the distance as he's <laughs> screaming for help. So heading down the help street. Because he's like, bring Marge back this instant. And Harry's like, no, not going to do it. She deserved it. And he assumes he's going to be expelled from Hogwarts. That's how angry he is. He doesn't even give a shit. He doesn't have a plan. I've already been Lumos Maximin. I found a way to grow my wiener. It's extreme incantations. I'm going to be in trouble for all that. <laughs> I just love how you open the book for extreme incantation and one of them is like blimp someone. Oh, is that what the impression you got was? Is that's that he had just learned that? Yeah. That's interesting. It's he didn't even have to use this wand. Do you know that's advanced? Like only like... Advanced incanta- extreme incantations. Well, but I mean, like, it's really talented to be able to do magic without a wand or yeah. without speaking. Like, that's an it's its own thing in, like, the, the seventh year of this school, I think. Yeah. But, but as we learn Harry's later on wizard. in the movie, Harry is an exceptionally powerful wizard. He is. Uh, uh, that's why he's the main character. Yes. Right? He is the boy who lived. And then we kind of get, like, a horror sequence with Harry alone at night, sitting on the curb with his trunk. Um, there's, like, a really barky dog. Really scary looking dog staring at him. Wolf. That may or may not be important that there's a dog there. Mm. Wink, debatable, wink. debatable. And then we get like a double decker, but it's a triple, triple decker, decker, you know, British bus. Yeah. Whenever the, I think the night bus. of Britain, it's always the double decker bus. I want to ride on the top of one of those so bad. Yeah. So bad. Don't you? What would you do up there? I don't know. Probably open my umbrella and try to fly away like Mary Poppins. <laughs> Drink some tea. And then land in a pub. There you go. That sounds like that. I mean, that is the watch quintessential British experience. I'd watch some football for sure. Are they Start still, a fight. Are they still in the World Cup? And then the, what do they call the uh, the cops? Uh, 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 they don't have any guns. Uh, they just tro- have sticks. Begins with a T, right? I don't know. Trolleys? Tro- no. A trolley? A trolley is a cart with snacks. With nosh. <laughs> <laughs> trolleys have nosh, Steve. They're, 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 they're daddies, patties, bobbies, 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 daddies. <laughs> Here come the daddies. Someone call the daddy. <laughs> Don't worry. The daddies are here. It's been a the- crime. <laughs> call the daddies. Good thing we got the daddies. <laughs> Hi, daddy. Daddy. <laughs> I'm pipping the door. I'm pipping the door. I called the did daddies. S- did someone talk about me, daddy? <laughs> uh, it's called the night bus with a K that's clever and Stan Shunpike. He's like the, I don't know what it would be. He's like the, or the ticket taker. And eh, he's like a bus guy. Concierge. Yeah. Concierge of the bus. Of Cause the, the bus. bus is also kind of a hotel. It is in some ways. He carries his own trunk in, by the way, I found this out, Steve. He, what she fell over for. Cause that's, there's some like com- British comedy when he shows up to pick up Harry that I really enjoyed. I'm a huge Monty Python guy. Uh, but as he's carrying, uh, Harry's trunk. I'm taking way too much time on this, but I found this fascinating. I don't know if you noticed it. He lifts the trunk up. It's too heavy. And he goes, oh, Gordon Bennett. Right? Yeah, Gordon Bennett. Yeah. Did you know what that is? No, I don't. But I remember him saying that. Yeah. He says Gordon Bennett. I I Googled it. Like, who the hell's Gordon Bennett? It's nobody. Gordon Bennett is an English language idiomatic phrase. So it's an idiom used to express surprise, contempt, outrage, disgust, or frustration. So if you could, and if you're in England, and you stub your toe, getting a spot of tea. Gordon, Gordon, you can Bennett. just go, ah, Gordon Bennett, and that'll like you'll fit right in. That's the opposite of cod swallop, right there, my friend. I just find that Gordon fascinating. Bennett, it's just somebody's name. I don't think there's any. 
Who is the original Gordon Bennett? And that's their legacy. I don't know that there is an original. I don't know. I couldn't find. I didn't Google much, but we, you got to We got to figure out the the history of this phrase. There's yeah, got to be. Write into streamingthingspod at gmail dot com and and tell us the story of Gordon Bennett. Because I don't think in the U.S. of A. we have a similar idiom other than Jesus Christ. Do we <laughs> we don't say anyone's name as a curse. Logan Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, any who's them. There's also like a Jamaican shrunken head, uh, tree, tray and a half. Uh, he sees Sirius black on a newspaper. That's where we find out the, the plot line that he's escaped from Azkaban, which is the wizard prison. Don't, and then don't forget about Ernie, the bus driver, Ernie, the bus driver, Take it away, Ernie stalwart, Ernie. Mm. He, and the bus is really cool. I love this sequence where they're, it's able to like kind of metamorphose. <laughs> into different situations. Like when there's two regular English double-decker buses, it goes between them. Um, they all get like real skinny. They all get real skinny and elongated. And then the shrunken head's like, why the long face, man? <laughs> Which is a funny joke. Yeah. It reminds me of the guy from Futurama. Are you a fan of that show? Yeah, if, uh, Phil Lamar's character. Is that who it is? Yeah. He does the, uh, what's the, the limbo. Yeah, I can't remember the character's name in Futurama, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I know I know the actor that voices him, but... I, that's a weird tidbit of knowledge <laughs> outside of the character. That's neat. I like that. Uh, but he has him drop him off at the Leaky Cauldron, the bar that he likes to frequent. Uh, and they say, next up, Nocturne Alley. But there's like a Uncle Fester looking motherfucker. <laughs> He's just an Uncle Fester guy. I think his name's Tom. Yeah, his name's yeah, Tom. Yeah. He gets off the bus with him and he, we find out very quickly he works for Cornelius Fudge. Um, there's a guy in the, in the leaky cauldron stirring a cup of tea with magic for no reason. Yeah. He's just twirling his finger. It's, no, he's isn't... twirling it like right around the spoon. Yeah. You could literally just, just grab the spoon, just man. Grab the spoon. You I to... say that, but I would 100% do that if I could do magic. I'd be sitting on the couch grabbing shit with magic that is within reach. I would be scratching my own nuts by just doing Would this. you? Yeah, just, oh, yeah. I'd be afraid to, that's an extreme incantation. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the difference between Doritos Not and regular so, scratcho. Burritos. It's probably something corny like that. That's true. In this world, if you'd say like this, the smallest thing incorrect, it, you know, it's it's pretty, uh, pretty yeah, testiculous, itchulous, diagonally. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hedwig's already there. Very smart bird. Uh, and, and Cornelius Fudge is being way too nice to Harry Potter. He's uh, He should be expelling him, perhaps imprisoning him. That's a major law he's broken. Underage magic outside of Hogwarts. It's like but the he's, president like, oh, don't worry, son. I took the liberty of getting your school supplies and keeping you up in this room. It's like, dear boy, we wouldn't send you to Azkaban for blasting your aunt. And then uh, Uncle Fester's like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No one likes her. <laughs> no one likes her. But he, uh, they popped her and wiped her memory. Everything's fine. So they're okay. So just so we're clear, uh huh. They're okay with not holding Harry accountable with for his magic use because they're more concerned about getting him to Hogwarts to keep him safe. That's my read on things. Is that everybody's kind of scared for him. They're more concerned with Sirius Black, and they know that Sirius Black's going to be going for Harry. And plus. I think Cornelius, my read on it is that he's not a great person, but it's politically motivated. Like if the boy who lived gets murdered by an escaped prisoner, it's going to make, he's not going to win the next he's, election. He's not going to get reelected. <laughs> Correct. Uh, and do they so, have elections for the minister of magic? I, I would assume. Or do uh, yeah. they just pull your name out of a cup? I think the queen just chooses. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Get your me, name is Fudge. Get me the Fudge Chalice. God save me. Mm. Uh, the, the cuts to the housekeeper getting roared at. I from don't know a, why our version of the queen was Mrs. Doubtfire. Why not? That's Hello. all we. <laughs> Hello. That's Help all we got. On the way, dear. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's my image over. <laughs> Uh, the, the housekeeper gets roared at Ron and Hermione show up and then Ron's entire fucking family's there. I guess they had recently come back from Egypt. Uh, that was the, the tidbit I was getting. Ma oh, you missed, uh, Harry dealing with this monstrous book. Oh, did I? Yeah. That's before he meets Ron and Hi Hermione. I did. Monster book of monsters. Which there's a long sequence about that. What is this scene for? Like, this is a scene that I think they could cut it. They could but have, it, but it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it is fun. It's honestly horrifying. Like if there was a book <laughs> with like all the little pages flying out, yeah. and it's definitely the kind of book that Hagrid would, would assign. 
Yeah, and I love how Hagrid is like, well, how do you open the book? Well, you rub its spine, of course. Yeah, what, You're sexually stimulated, of course. <laughs> no, he says stroke. <laughs> yeah, well, Stroke its spine, of course. You said the same thing I did, but differently. But I, I think <laughs> my, my point is that stroke has a connotation that is somewhat sexual, mm-hmm. m- more so than rub. Jerk it off, boy. <laughs> Why did you do Yoda? <laughs> 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 like, that next. Little, like that little green thing do you <laughs> uh yeah so ron's family went to egypt molly's mommy and him hey make sure you got all your books dear and then arthur pulls harry aside nobody's gonna tell him this but arthur's just a straight shooter and he's like look man <laughs> he's a straight shooter. you're in grave danger nobody at the ministry would want me to say this but uh, uh he, he's gonna be wanting to find you just promise me you won't go looking for him and then harry's like why would i go looking for somebody who wants to kill me yeah because sirius was a big supporter of voldemort and thinks the only thing stopping voldemort from coming back into power is harry potter himself yes that's right and and arthur's like you're not going to find out the answer to that question until the end of the second act harry and then the scene cuts we um, do learn there's like a minor subplot in the scene where uh, uh hermione now has a cat named crookshanks true and apparently crookshanks is, is always crookshanks trying- new well this is the first time they've really i think shown it and kind of talked about yeah, it. I think she had it as a first year, but it's, it hasn't yeah, been a huge thing. But yet. they haven't like really brought any attention to her or anything, but true. Crookshanks this year, for whatever reason is out for scabbers, which I don't blame her. I don't blame her either. I mean, she's, I mean, hashtag Crookshank was right. You know, the reason is that she who must not be named just now in the third book thought of the fact that scabbers has been another person the whole time. And so she's, st- started putting tidbits of it in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to break the spell. <laughs> um, she did. It was, it was actually, she's trying to correct a mistake where she was like, wait, Scabbers is how old? Oh shit. Uh, rats don't live that long. Oh no. Uh, oh, cause it's a person. <laughs> High five me. <laughs> I mean, I dug it. We cut to the Hogwarts express. Everybody's getting on board and saying goodbye to their loved ones. Someone is asleep in the cabin that Harry, Hermione and Ron, uh, d- choose. And they decide, ah, well, let's talk about super top secret stuff. They're asleep. Uh, well, they know it's Lupin. Do they? Yeah. Cause Hermione's like, that's professor Lupin. How do you know? It's on his luggage. Oh, that's right. She's clever. She mm-hmm. can read. She's the brightest witch of her age. <laughs> she is. Uh, Harry tells Ron and Hermione what he's learned about Sirius Black. Uh, and that's when the Dementors show up. Scabbers ain't having it. Mm-mm. Very scared of the Dementors. Uh, and then one of the Dementors starts sucking off Harry, which is... <laughs> <laughs> what? I was drinking water. I know. You said that. That's why. It, that was perfect timing. <laughs> he starts to suck his soul out. Um and then Harry, I love this bit of editing. Harry hears a woman scream and says his name, but then they made the scream blend with the train the whistle. Train, yeah. God, that was fucking good. That's, that's the kind really of good. like details that don't exist in, in most of the other Harry Potter films. That's what I'm saying. That's Definitely that, that's that cor- coronification. And this this scene in particular where the, the window gets all icy and then you see uh, the one Dementors in the, what do you call it? The hallway of the train slowly yeah. kind of walk. Like that's- creepy as shit yeah that's really really effective and then like yeah there's a part where harry kind of looks longingly out the window in a foreboding manner and it's his a shot of his reflection in the rain outside and mm-hmm. uh, it's just real like you said it's the best looking film so far by a mile um but, but I, I like lo- that bit of editing as well but i love that when uh harry comes to lupin is just like eat your chocolate boy it's gonna make you feel better eat your chocolate uh and he, he I'm going to go talk to the conductor. Yeah. And they found out that no one else heard the woman screaming. Only Harry did. Mm, not a good sign. Yeah, not a good sign. And uh, we listened to the Hogwarts choir singing a song as we get to see the, the money qu- shot of Hogwarts. The choir is amazing. I love that song. Oh, it's a good, it's a good song. But we get the money shot of Hogwarts in this, in this movie. It's now in a, everyone's in a carriage ride. That's yep. how you see Hogwarts for the first time. Well, those are Thestrals, I believe, Steve. That the, take the them carriages? to the school. Yeah, the, the carriages are, are controlled by thestrals. Mm. Or is, not controlled, but like pulled is, along. Is a thestral also a type of bird? Uh, no, mm. it's a fictional You're not beast. Thinking of a it's like a it's like a it's like a horse. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, why was the choir holding frogs? I didn't notice that they were. Yeah, the front row. I saw a couple pumpkins. The front row of kids were all holding giant huh. ass frogs. Why not? Yeah. It's not they, the weirdest thing we're going to see in this movie. Because they stop singing. They have a beautiful song, Toil and Trouble, and then the song ends. And then Something the, the, wicked does All the comes. frogs are like, ribbit. Were they part of the song as well? I think so. Wow. I 
at least they had they they had the, uh, the the punctuation mark at the end of the song. I've never noticed that, but if you were a wizard and you were in a choir, why would you not train frogs to be a part of the song? <laughs> That'd be not? the first order of business. Maybe everyone in the choir only has frog familiars. Yeah. They don't have a scabbers. They were like, hey, everybody bring now. your familiar tomorrow. We're going to use them in the song. And everyone showed up with frogs. Guys, we all brought frogs. <laughs> That's why we're pals. We're going to look so dumb. That's why we're pals. <laughs> we all chose great minds. Frog choir. Great minds think alike in the choir, boys. Uh, the new Dumbledore is revealed. By the way, that's huge. It's kind of accepted now, but at the time we were like, whoa, that's not him. I kind of forgot that this was the movie that the Dumbledore changed. Yep. And so on- when Michael Gambon popped up, like, whoa, 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 wait, what? My- Michael Who Gambon pops up a much, I don't want, I wouldn't say better, better, better. I wouldn't say better Dumbledore, um, but kind of like, I think that Dumbledore is like old and wizened and kind of cute. Like lemon drop is my password. But at the same time, he- Everyone should exercise caution. Caution. That's very good to do. But also- like and then Michael Gammon comes like, welcome to the new school year, kids. I'm on Coke. <laughs> he's pretty spry. It needs to be at times. And I think that the original casting would not have been able to pull that. So together they have all aspects of like my idea of Dumbledore. But I love Michael Gambon. I think he does an incredible job. Um, the previous actor passed away. His, his name is escaping me at this moment. Uh, Richard Harris. Richard Harris. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lupin is there to fill in the defense against the dark arts position as well. Uh, Malfoy mocks Potter. Imagine that uh, for being scared of the Dementors and passing out because he's the only one that passed out. Hey, Potter, is it true you fainted? Yes, yeah, sissy. Uh, care of magical creatures teacher uh, retired in order to spend time with his remaining limbs is, what, is the way that Dumbledore <laughs> says it. And Hagrid is taking over. So they're giving him a, a teaching position. Uh, somebody who never graduated Hogwarts. That's great. Hogwarts will play host. Hagrid's a self-made man. He is. Pulled himself up by his uh, whatever people in England wear instead of bootstraps. His kestrel straps. Only Americans, Thestral. Yeah. Or orchestral. Orchestral. <laughs> the frog straps. Yeah. Um, I did some research, by the way. That that choir is called the Frog Choir. Really? According to the Harry Potter wiki. Yeah, hardcore Harry fans are going to be losing their minds right now. He didn't know about the frogs. This is the frog choir. I, I wish Andy was here. I can't really see. I'm doing a quick little look, look through here. I can't really read why the frogs are there, but look, man, they, you don't want to go down that, that, that path with this movie. Yeah, this is a wormhole. Just leave it. Just have, leave it. We don't have time for the frog choir. Um, and then Hogwarts is going to play host to Dementors until Sirius Black is captured. And then famously Dumbledore says, but a word of caution which I, I thought of you, Steve, and chuckled. must have a word of caution. They're extremely dangerous. They will not be able to differentiate from those that they're looking for and those who simply get in their way. Why <laughs> are these things here? How <laughs> insane is this? Like, hey, we know there's a killer on the loose. We Easily could, more dangerous than the killer. We could just post Aurors or yeah. the wizard security force which are sure. ours, I guess. Uh, no, we're going to put little demons that suck your soul and can't differentiate between good and evil. No, they just <laughs> like to suck souls. Just little soul hoovers Again, running around a school. At a school. Yeah. This is like, hey, guys, there's a murderer running loose in town. We got to protect the elementary school. So you know what we did? We hired... Uh, a bunch of Harvey uh, Weinstein clones. They're just going to be posted at the at the entrance. It's of the a most terrible schools. idea, and like what? it's 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 not a safe school. And no. we'll see pretty soon in Hagrid's first class. Not safety's not even on the list of priorities, much less at the top of it. Uh, but I did love that frog choir. He gives him a word of caution at the very least, Steve. I mean, he's like, "Look, it's on you. You've been warned. If it, it's on you, I told you. It's just like with the chamber." They mostly hold what they hate one percenters the most. <laughs> Our Dumbledore slowly devolves into Bernie Sanders. It does for me because I'm not as talented <laughs> as a voice actor. Did you notice that? I think the, the, the so there's the big tables in the Great Hall, right? Uh-huh. Did you notice that it looked like the the classes changed? Like because Hogwarts was always on the the first table to the you mean right. Gryffindor or Gryffindor. I'm sorry, not Hogwarts. That's the fucking school. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Gryffindor was always on the table on the f- right. Like if you're going down the middle, it was the table on the right. Am I correct in this? And if you're now, facing Dumbledore the dais? Yes. I think and you're right. I think it's, they're it's on like the left mid, side. It's middle right is what it was, I yeah. think. 
Oh. I, may, I, I don't know. That maybe I'm wrong, but I thought like, oh, they're gonna they change they changed the whole. You guys sit over here now. <laughs> We're doing some things differently this year. <laughs> we also put the Whomping Willow on a hill. It is in a different location. <laughs> it's like more secluded. Yeah. We put Hagrid's hut down there too. A different art director. We told the these one percenters. We only gave the construction workers one bit of feedback, and that was caution. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. They go to get into the Gryffindor common room. Uh, the fat lady, is, that's her name. It's the painting that they have to give the password to. Fortuna. PH. Yes. <laughs> Fortuna Major is the password. She wants She wants to sing for him, though, because the fat lady sings. Right? I, love, I love that she's basically Kristen Wiig from SNL. Like, oh, don't, let me, don't make me sing. <laughs> yeah. Don't make me sing. Uh, and, then, and then she like. They're like, just let me in. She and breaks she's like. the glass. It's like, like, look what I did with my voice. Plebs. <laughs> She calls them plebs because they don't want to listen to her sing. I thought that was funny. It's really like under under the sound of the voice. Um, but the gang's all there. They're being kids. We get to see Dean Thomas. We definitely see Seamus. Uh, they're playing with some kind of like. Neville's there. Neville's there. Voice changing beans. It's a cute little scene where like it's like. Making animal noises. Adolescence being adolescence. Doing yeah. fun stuff. You know. This is a good. Harry's little- a choo-choo train. This is a good little reminder. Like they're just kids having fun in a dorm room. Yeah. I thought it was an effective scene for like, cause you know, you don't have the time that the book has, but it gets to show them actually doing kid stuff momentarily. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dementors be lurking though. Cause he goes outside the window during the Harry Potter choo choo train episode. And uh, they're just floating around and it, it's a wide shot of them all just kind of staring at the school. Like, Ooh, I'm going to get you. Why don't we ever do animal babies together, <laughs> yeah. guys? Carl, we never play like that anymore. We, we just floaty up here, and I, sometimes I think it would be good a good morale booster. You know, I love do some fun little icebreaker games like this. <laughs> I love sucking souls. I, amen. <laughs> but I'd like to play a game every now and then. I, a, a shoots and ladders, maybe. Come on. Maybe. Oh, I would just suck a soul for some charades. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my my Dementor's ass. I would love that. <laughs> I mean, that's all we do is suck souls. We I, used to be more, you know, three <laughs> Dementorid. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking souls used to be a, so special, but we do it so much. Mm. We do it so much. Now, can't, let's shake things up. We're out of school. Let's We're at a new soul. place. Let's get a kid. Oh, we don't spit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't spit. We just suck. <laughs> oh, you know what we should do? We should go to Hogsmeade and get new robes. <laughs> Ours is so ratty They're and tattered. So ratty and tatter. We're no longer in a prison. That's why we don't get invited nowhere. No. We suck real hard. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going to be funny, <laughs> but it is to me. And yeah, this is all staying in. Oh, it better. Good. Do they do some establishing shots after the wide shot of the Dementors? There's some really good handheld camera work around the grounds. That's the kind of thing. That's where the Alfonso, that's where the Fonz comes the Fonz in, man. Fonz coming in hot. He's like, oh, it's scary, isn't it? Uh, that, <laughs> that was, if you were watching the YouTube, you got the, the jaunty handheld camera Is this reference. where we get to see the Whomping Willow yeah, you see, absolutely destroy a bird? I wrote ye old Whomping Willow. Uh, and then we cut inside to a new character, Professor Trelawney. Professor of Divination, played by Emma Thompson. I love Professor Trelawney. It's like, because it's Emma Thompson or just in general? It's just perfect. in general. I honestly didn't even know it was Emma Thompson until I looked it up later. But like when she shows up and she's doing her Professor Trelawney thing, I'm like this woman is a vibe. I she love is. her. I, this is this is the epitome of a professor. Like when I was in college, if I knew of her, I would sign up for her class, have it, believing she is full of shit. I don't believe in divination at all. Gods, if I don't. I had one of those. It was I an Eastern philosophy, because I was a philosophy major. I took a ton of Eastern philosophy courses. Not that I think Eastern philosophy is like worse than Western philosophy, but it really wasn't my bag at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just loved his vibe again. Yeah. You know, I'll sit and meditate with you, bro. Whatever. Yeah. Give me an A. <laughs> uh, I love Trelawney as well. It, they're studying tassiomancy, which is the study of tea leaves at the time. But this whole like, Thing It doesn't make sense because Hermione's whole thing is that she kind of scoffs at divination because it's like she's treating it like a pseudoscience amongst hard won science, which is funny to me because it's all magic. Yeah. So the idea that somebody <laughs> could like read the future in a crystal ball or in tea leaves isn't that crazy if you're already a witch. Right. But in this 
universe it is. Like even Trelawney is kind of shit upon like as a kooky old bird mm -hmm. uh, who does like very ineffectual magic at best, at least by Hermione. Um, but it's the one thing Hermione's not instantly amazing at, which is why she hates it, I think. Yeah. Uh, which comes in later. Uh, but there's a funny joke where they're trying to d divine the tea leaves. She walks up to Neville and goes, <laughs> Is your grandmother quite well? And he's like, I think so. And she's like, Are you sure? And he's like, Well, and then she just walks she away. Walks away. Yeah. What a funny bit. This is why I love her. Like, I just love her subtly and innocently destroying people's day. Yeah. And like being none the wiser that that's what she's doing. And she freaks out at Harry's tea leaves. <laughs> the Grim. The Grim. And then one of the other kids like Googles it because she won't say in the back. He's like, uh, It says here, top search result is ancient. <laughs> uh, Thing meaning death. Omen of death. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bad things. So it zooms in on Harry. He's pretty scared about that. And then oh, we're learning that Hermione is just appearing suddenly. Yes. She's, uh, she mentioned something about being in ancient runes as well. And then Ron says, well, ancient runes is at the same time as divination. And she's like, uh, you're Ron, you're dumb. Yeah. I don't know why you didn't even say that. By the way, wh what syllabus are you looking at? You're dumb. You're dumb. Uh, and throughout this movie, several times, Ron will say, where did she come from? Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and why would she scoff at divination as a note? I wrote, I already talked about that. It's magic, not science. We cut to a class with Hagrid, his first, uh, class as a professor, a stroke, the spine, of course. That's when that comes in. <laughs> uh, the book attacks Neville, uh, a bit of Neville. some corny physical comedy as Neville's kind of on the trail fighting the book still. I love how he shows back up and his clothes are just all torn apart. The book to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Uh, classic Potter Malfoy squabble with a, where's the teacher? What's uh, Hagrid was just right there. He's going to get Buckbeak. I guess, but it's like constantly unattended children beating each other up and going on adventures in this, in this movie. Uh, and they're in these movies. Um, you're supposed to stroke it is what, <laughs> is what he says when he gets back. Uh, a hippogriff Buckbeak is introduced. Everybody say hello to Buckbeak. Buckbeak. He's good hippogriff. He is. You got to show him he's, you know, we love Buckbeak, but he is a stickler for manners. You got to bow to him. They are very prideful creatures. Very. And he's like, I love how Hagrid's basically like, uh, you'll regret it instantly and for the rest of your life because you'll be missing limbs. Who wants to go first? Uh, everybody <laughs> backs up, leaving Harry standing up front. Harry, good lad. And he thinks Harry decided to step forward, which is pretty funny. Who'd like to come and say hello? Uh, Hermione holds Ron's hand briefly. So this is when we start to get like a really accentuated romance vibe between Ron and Hermione. Like they're, they got, they're crushing on each other. I still don't feel it. Yeah. It's not there. There's no, no chemistry, but they're trying to yeah. make it there. It's like the word fetch and mean girls. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to happen. They're trying to make, stop trying to make it happen. Uh, Hagrid puts him on. <laughs> so this whole thing happens real quick. Like the, the, the hippogriff's a little bit nervous about Harry. It looks like it's failing. And you can tell Hagrid, these are dangerous enough creatures that even Hagrid's like, Oh, Harry, don't move. Uh, and don't then move. it works out. He pets the hippogriff and then he just Picks Harry up and sets him on his back. and the, fly. And Hippogriff flies away. This school has no concern for safety whatsoever. They're dementors up there. Yeah. But not only that, but it's like, at least tell them, like, then you're going to fly it. Like, mm -hmm. we've got knee pads. Multiple wizards are standing also, by to uh, arresto momento if you fall. But also, what, as a teacher, what is the rest of the class doing for the five minutes? At, like, all right, kids, now, if you were up there. Cheering for the main character, Steve. And That's just, what they're doing. They're just everyone like, pissing off Draco. Why does Harry Potter always get every <laughs> fucking of course cool he thing gets handed to, to him? Of course he gets to hide. Dude, I want to. There's one kid in there that's so mad. Like my whole life, all I've wanted to do is write a hippogriff at Harry Potter. There's a village in there's a, that for me. There, I want to write the book if, when when this is public domain. Will we got like thirty more years? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thirty more. Years. I think it's coming it's fifty up. years. Um, there's a villain origin story happening in the back of that class. Every who's always like in Harry's classes who fucking hates Harry. Yeah. Right. And it's foreign and not Draco, just the quiet kid who just gets shat on. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway, it, th like he's some just disdainful Hufflepuff just writing tiny margins in a journal about how much he hates Harry. I love everyone, but Harry Potter, I hate that kid so much. Oh my God. <laughs> That's going to be the book I want to write. By the way, are you going to play uh, Hogwarts Legacy, the the no, massive no. RPG Harry Potter game? I don't know. Maybe. I already bought the deluxe pre-order because mm -hmm. you get extra robes and stuff. My wife's really excited about playing it. And she yeah. came in. Uh, I was uh, putting the baby down to sleep the other night. And she came in like, oh, my God, it's so exciting. I found out that you can link your Pottermore account. You know what Pottermore is? Yeah. You can link your Pottermore account to Hogwarts Legacy. And it'll like 
give you extra like wands and like your actual wand that you got by answering the quiz and like your actual house that you got by answering the quiz. And she's like almost out of breath. And I'm like, that's really cool, babe. But that means you're going to be a fucking Hufflepuff because that's what she got on the quiz. Mm. She's like, I love Hufflepuff. I'm excited. That's what I'm going to be in. Well, I watched a, um, like a playthrough of that game and they were like doing a tour of the Hufflepuff dorm. Really? Specifically. And it was like, oh, that's a really cool that you can hang out in the Hufflepuff dorm. And I guess all the dorms are different. Oh, for sure. I'm yeah. not going to know where your stupid dorm is. But the, but the Hufflepuff dorm is like underground. So there's like a lot of like. Where it should be. <laughs> What's well, underground near the kitchens. Mm. So Hungry little guys. Hungry little badgers. <laughs> she is very Hufflepuffy. Honey badger don't she care. She loves snacks. Snacks. Uh, so he flies the hippogriff. He ends up landing. Um, and then, of course, uh, Malfoy accosts the hippogriff because he's jealous. By the way, while he's up there, he does a full rose on the Titanic move. Uh, which sure. Why wouldn't you, if you're on a hippogriff, Yeah. <laughs> except that he's by himself. And so it's sadder because <laughs> he doesn't have Jack behind him holding his arms. He had the spirit of Jack behind him. He did. Uh, it's very sad though. But yeah. And then Malfoy comes up like, I can do it. What's up? Prideful, stupid fucking bitch ass hippogriff. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly. He's like the dumbest guy on the planet. Malfoy's and then he gets so scratched dumb. and he's like, Oh, it killed me. I'm dying. I'm mm. dead. He really tries to milk you and your bloody chicken. And the next scene, he's milking it with Pansy Parkinson. Uh, she's mooning over him like, oh, you poor dear. And he's like, yeah, they almost had to take me arm off. That's he, not the same girl from the previous movie. That no, he that he was, was impersonate. Mildred something. Mm. I forget her name. Yeah, it's hard to remember these names, isn't it? No, Millic <laughs> Millicent Bullstrode, bitch. Oh, uh, you got it. <laughs> this is Pansy Parkinson. Uh, there's like ghosts sleeping through. Is she related through to Parker Posey? I think so. <laughs> There's ghosts sleeping through a ghost window. I thought that was really cool. It's like ghost glass shatters as those uh, like oh, ghost yeah, horses yeah. jump through the window. They do it twice. Um, and then there's Seamus with dramatic news. Uh, Sirius Black's been sighted. And uh, <laughs> he tells him that it's been in, in Dovetown. Uh, and then there's a, the Dementor transition that I talked about earlier where they kind of glide over the grass and everything mm -hmm. freezes. Um Hey guys, we still haven't gotten a board game to play. Uh, we're I just thought looking. we decided that Tuesdays was going to be Dementor Dank Game Night. This is why we don't hang out. You guys are terrible at planning we're, and following through. I, I, what, what else are we doing? We're just floating up here in the sky. I can see you over there. I guess what we're going to do is suck souls. Let me guess. Uh, pff, every damn day. It's, <laughs> it's the same thing with these guys. I just just I just want to, excuse me for trying to broaden our horizons. Yeah, excuse me. Let me go put on my ratty old tatty robes and go suck somebody. Oh, look at me looking just not like a snack. <laughs> <laughs> we cut to the first defense against the dark arts lesson uh taught by remus lupin the uh, man and it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie it's fighting a boggart hell yeah a boggart is a creature that can mimic your deepest darkest fear uh but very easy to combat you just have to say ridiculous that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and think of something funny. Uh, and this is when they say, when did she get here looking at Hermione? Because she defines what a boggart is, of and, course. And Malfoy's like, this class is ridiculous. That's what I'm talking about. High five. Hey, guy, crab, arm. Goyle, even though Goyle apparently got fired. Or was it crab? One of them definitely well, got fired. Yeah, one of them's gone. For like weed or something. Oh, like that's a real thing? Yeah, I, I know one of them doesn't appear. Well, maybe it's the last movie where he got replaced because uh, he got like in trouble for busted with the something. wacky tobacco. That's yeah. all it was. Yeah. Come on, man. It wasn't a big deal, but they come on, man. Yeah. Well, I guess if he was like 15, they were like, damn, man, <laughs> you're going to be a real Charlie Sheen in a couple of years. Aren't you? Oh, <laughs> Tiger blood. Get out of here. River Phoenix. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that? <laughs> oh, was that too soon? <laughs> I guess a group mogul like yourself is going to stop me. As a professional in the field, I want to say that was demanded. <laughs> Professor Snape is Neville's deepest, darkest fear. And he uh, gets imagined in Neville's grandma's clothing. That's how you get rid of that mm -hmm. boggart. And then there's this awesome montage, yeah. which for some reason, Lupin puts on a record of swing music. Yeah. <laughs> and there's diegetic music. I mean, it is the 90s. So like everyone was into big band swing music in the 90s. So. It's so fun. Like I thought we were going to get to see everybody. Like you get to see... Uh, Ron's basically terrified of Aragog, the spider. Yeah, he so puts he puts ice skates on him. Rolling skates, yeah, yeah, which is really cute. Um, what were some of the other ones? There's a big snake for someone, and big they made snake. the snake into a big clown. That was a which, weird transition. That was kind of weird. That was just like, a completely different thing. Like, that's just, that's also horrifying. <laughs> it was. It was its own <laughs> scary thing. Stop it. You suck at this. Um, and then Harry jumps up 
And of course it turns into a Dementor. Lupin jumps in front of him and then it turns into a moon, which is a really cool little touch. Yeah. Uh, he gets rid of it. He's like, class is over for today. And everybody's groaning. Cause it's the first class that anybody was actually having fun learn. Like Lupin's a great yeah, teacher. They were legit learning a really good skill. skill yeah, and skill. it was a lot of fun. The skill. <laughs> you jumped into your Dementor voice. <laughs> oh, Hey, I'm just the bogger Dementor. Yeah. You learn, about, you learn about them skills. Oh, boo. I'm scared. Oh, I'm a moon now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a moon. <laughs> Hope I don't moon you. I'm going to go to Azkaban for that. <laughs> don't drop the wizarding soap. Uh, and then we cut to all the kids getting excited to go on their extended field trip to Hogsmeade, except that Harry didn't get his permission slip signed. That was what he was trying to get Uncle Vernon to sign so he could go to Hogsmeade this year. Third years are allowed to go out and drink butterbeer and whatnot. Um, the idea that he couldn't forge it in a magical universe is wild to me. Like this whole plot line where he's like, is he that big of a nerd? Oh, honorable. I know that you gave me this to be alone with for four months, but, um, my guardian didn't sign it, unfortunately. So also you guys are very well aware that my guardians abuse me. <laughs> <laughs> like this, is, yeah. It's like it's it's an open secret. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You all know this, and you send me back there anyway. Yeah. So, so. maybe do me a solid, McGonagall, <laughs> and just write the goddamn paper slip. That's my final word on the matter. You will stay here alone because you're a poor boy with dead parents, and all your other friends with alive parents are going to go have fun, Mister Potter. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's a damn boggart. That's what that is. Yeah, it is. Any who's well, he stays alone by himself, but does get to talk to Lupin for the first of, I think four times for extended periods where he bonds with professor Lupin. Um, and then he talks about the boggart incident. And he's like, why did you jump in front of me? And he's like, I think, you know, very well, I did. Why I did that, Terry, you suck. Uh, I assumed he would take the shape of Lord Voldemort. Um, why did you do this lesson then? That's not a good idea. Uh, that's what he says. Um, but he says, no, I, I thought it might be, I thought about Voldemort for a second, but, uh, the Dementor popped up and then he says something very British. Lupin says, uh, very wise of you to fear, fear itself, Harry, which is a quote of, uh, what's his fucking face? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Yeah. That the is, World War II is, guy. That is not a British quote. That is, uh, Woodrow or, uh, uh, FDR. That's FDR. I yeah. thought it was, uh, the whiskey guy. Churchill. Churchill. No, he's like, we will storm the beaches. <laughs> <laughs> we will protect the sea. I okay. can't remember the fate, but yeah, fear I itself thought it was Churchill. is, uh, FDR. Okay. Uh, the Dementors make Check us. Check out our, uh, President's Day quiz for more of that. Type of <laughs> <laughs> Me not knowing. <laughs> Uh, I know. A little Are we going to do another President's Day? I know as much February? about President's Day as I do a, a presidents as I do about 80s music. Just take it that way. If you're new here. A lot. Another President's Day Jeopardy. Why not? I don't know how many more movie theme presidents things you can do. I know. After doing two completely separate ones. Yeah. You were thinking of we will fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. <laughs> Churchill. That's, that's my Churchill. Yeah. I saw Darkest Hour. <laughs> Who hasn't seen a Darkest Hour? I mean, that's all you need to know With, about uh, Churchill. Gary Oldman as well. Gary Oldman. Um, he's a Gary Oldman. Um, <laughs> God damn it. He's a Gary Oldman. <laughs> <laughs> so Dementors make us face our very worst memories. The reason that, as you find this out later in the movie, but the reason why Harry is more affected than the other kids is he actually has dark memories, right? Shit's happened to him. He's been through the shit is what they used to say about Nam. Um, and then he says... Uh, uh, he mentions his mother. Lupin does mentions Harry's mother. And then Harry looks at him and there's this funny sequence. Cause I'm a child where Lupin turns around and he goes, yes. Oh yes. I knew your mother <laughs> tied ass on that one. Like just the, the way he's sadly like, stop. They're going down that road. Don't go down that road. Um, there are some odd things that he and uh, Sirius both do in regards to Harry's mom. Like you look like your dad, but your eyes, <laughs> That's your mother. Oh, dog. your she, eyes. Lily, what was her maiden name? Yeah. <laughs> Lily Fudd. Dursley. No. <laughs> no. No, because that's Vernon. Vernon. Yeah. That's not how marriage works. Yeah. No. I used to know her maiden name, Andy. I wish Andy was here. Her eyes. Mm. <laughs> but, James, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> James had a talent for trouble. You're more like him than you know. Uh, we cut to Ron 
talking about hogs meat on the stairs while everybody's trying to get into the Gryffindor. Harry, this place was so cool. <laughs> Holy shit, Sonko shop. It was the tits. Why weren't you there? <laughs> oh yeah, your parents are dead. Oh, I'm going to go hang out with my new friends I met at Hogsmeade. Yeah, since you don't give me any of your money, Elon Musk. <laughs> money? <laughs> well, no, I don't know why I did a uh, Forrest Gump instead of British. <laughs> oh well. I know what love is, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Dan said we didn't have to worry about money no more. So that's one less thing. Um, the so who, who's the head boy? It's Percy. Okay. Percy Weasley. The fat lady's gone. Someone attacked her. There's like slashes in the painting. And there's like a baby painting crying next to it. And she, like this lady trying to sue. <laughs> it, dude, it's so funny. It's I so well the, done. The, all the paintings are in disarray over this news. And yes. Also, like, I brought up Percy because this is the second scene in which Percy's there just going, head boy here, head boy, make way, head boy, yeah, head boy. Very 1920s Head boy, vibes. come here. The painting's missing, head boy. Read all about it. <laughs> you heard it here first from so the head boy. He's a much more prominent character in the books, so they just kind of have to put him in somewhere in the movies. Uh, Dumbledore and Filch show up. Dumbledore's nails are triflingly bad. <laughs> Did you notice that? They're very long. They're cracked. They're yellowing. It's just not how I picture Dumbledore. He I feel needs, like he, his he, shit would be on fleek. He needs a mani. Literally use your wand. And probably a petty. <laughs> uh, manicure perfecto. Fucking done. Well, this is a different Dumbledore, right? New year, new dumbs. <laughs> new dumbs. Uh, and then the fat lady snitches and says that it's <laughs> serious black. Is the one that did it to her. Eyes ah, like the devil he's got. Ah. Uh, the castle is then sealed because they know he's inside. It's like a disaster relief camp. They pull everybody to the great hall. And all of a sudden there's only like 62 students in the building. We have to tell all the students they can't go out of the door. Storm anymore. the beaches. <laughs> we will fight the Dementors on the beaches on the <laughs> landing grounds. The Whopping Willow. Uh, the, and then uh, what else happens? Oh, Snape. Oh, they're sent to the great hall. Yeah, they all just sleep there. Like that's what yeah. I'm saying. Disaster relief. They, they put like a nice little, uh, just uh, like a sky up sky there. Sky and galaxies. Uh. Well, there's a really cool shot of Dumbledore when he's looking down at what he thinks is a sleeping Harry. I like how Snape and Dumbledore have this super serious conversation about Harry two feet away, and just assume that the teenager is sleeping. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's like, uh, he talks about like, oh no, let him dream. Let him swim in the deepest oceans, fly over the highest mountains. And Harry's just staring at him while he says this. Uh, actually, and Snape's also like, that's a little much. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's tone it back a bit. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And we cut to Snape teaching defense against the dark arts, but he's like the substitute, but he's not the cool kind. That's just going to wheel in the cart with the TV on it and play. Remember the Titans? No, 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 no. Snape wants this job. So Page 394. Werewolves. Hermione says, we were just talking about fiddly stings and tiddlywinks yesterday. I said, page 394. Were werewolves, not swear wolves. Can anyone tell me the difference between an animagus and a werewolf? Mm, ooh, no one, ooh, huh? Ooh, You're all fucking ooh, stupid. Ooh, me, and, Hermione. And then Hermione says the difference between an animagus and a werewolf, which is what, Steve? An animagus chooses to transform. Werewolves cannot choose. That's right. What else about werewolves did we learn? Uh, their wolf. Pardon? <laughs> werewolf, their wolf. <laughs> werewolf, their wolf. No, werewolves would turn on their very best friend. They have no mm, control over their actions. Yes. They're forced to turn by the moon. Pretty common werewolf thing. I learned from Snape in this scene that uh, where comes from the Anglo-Saxon word meaning man. So it's really just saying man wolf when you oh, say werewolf. Yeah, that's a good point. But he scolds Hermione Granger for- uh, Did I take pride in being an insufferable know-it-all? And then you hear Ron go, he's got a point. <laughs> What the fuck, Ronald? What the fuck, Ron? That's your that's your fucking pal. That's one of your main trio of the gang. Can we all agree she is annoying? She does kind of suck. I don't know why we put up with her, honestly. <laughs> oh, she can hear me. Where did she come from? As soon as we went to Hogsmeade, I ditched her. <laughs> and then there's a really cool scene where Draco sends like a uh, an animated shitty note over to Harry. Uh, and Do you like me circle yes or no? <laughs> it's, but it's like highlighted yes or no, blinking. <laughs> uh, and then we get to Quidditch in the rain. For once, they're not playing Slytherin. Thank God. You'd think they would cancel it with a storm like that. Nah. I, mean, I feel like the kids on Bruins not like are a kid's ever going get to get struck by lightning. Nah, that's never going to happen. No. Except for when he does and no one cares. Yeah. 
<laughs> no one seems to care that he gets struck by lightning and is falling every bit as far as Harry's falling. But is anyone telling cool stories about it? We're standing over the other kids. Like we cut to Madame Pomfrey's infirmary right after this because Harry gets sucked off by a Dementor again and falls almost to his death until Dumbledore's like, Arresto momento. He also sees the Grim again in the clouds. He does. Yeah. He does. That doggy. It's a dog eat dog world up there. I'm just concerned why the kid from Hufflepuff that got struck by lightning, nobody gives a shit about. Like, I assume he's still just laying in the Quidditch pitch. <laughs> you know, that kid's dead. He's, oh, should we get him? Oh, he's not the main character. Oh, that's not Harry Potter. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? That's a rando. That's uh, a red was, shirt. What was the umbrella? I, I don't know. I think it was just a visual thing. It was cool. Like, oh, it got sucked away in the rain, the storm. And then you get to... The only thing, the, the visual purpose that I saw is when it flies by, it becomes a Dementor in the background. Oh, so is it a Dementor in disguise? No, it was just like a visual, like when it flies behind Harry and then you see the Dementor come out. Oh, so it was like a... It was like something in the sky to where he wouldn't notice Dementors were around him. Gotcha. Because in his peripheral, he just thought it was the umbrella kind of thing. I, I, that's the kind of touches that, you know, this Alfonso Guys, Cuaron I bought movie. an umbrella. It's Look at me. Raining. I don't want to get my tatter old robes even more tattered. I don't want them to get them wet. That's just common sense. I got it at the gift shop. I might have to suck somebody when I'm up here. I don't want to be all wet. Oh, there's one right now. Oh, there's a tasty little morsel coming up right now. He's just, <laughs> this is, ooh, this is drive-in food. Mm -mm. Here we go. I'm, I, you all told me I was flying up too high. Nothing would ever be up here. Look Joke, at you now. Joke's on you. Yeah, I would have got that other boy too till the lightning got him. Mm. I don't like it cooked. <laughs> Give it to me raw. I was going <laughs> to... <laughs> I was going sucking, but then I found out it was just a Hufflepuff. Mm. Ew, Patooey. <laughs> nobody likes Hufflepuffs. Patooey. Ain't nobody sucking them. Um, and then there's more Lupin and Harry conversation. We find out that, but right before that, that Harry broke his broom. Uh oh. I wish he was rich. He could just buy another one. This is a huge plot point, though, because he's not. Does his, his broom ends up in the. Willow? Yeah, the broom floated to the Whomping Willow. That's what oh, they, gotcha. they they break that news to him. And then Lupin's like, oh, can you fix your broom? And he's like, no. And he's like, damn, that sucks, Harry. Uh, and then he talks more about the Dementors. Um, and then we cut to Fred and George giving Harry the Marauders map. One of my favorite things in the Harry Potter franchise. I love it. I solemnly swear I am up to no good is how you activate the map. And then mischief managed is how you deactivate the map. Very cool. Iconic lines. Right. I have, I may or may not have sweaters that say, uh, I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. I may or may not. I'm not going to admit to that. Can't confirm. One of them denied. might be a crop top that shows off my midriff. Ooh, a crop top. It's my wife's. Oh, if you wear that, you are <laughs> definitely up to no good. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mischief managed. That's what I say every time I finish. Mischief, <laughs> <laughs> Mischief managed. I get a lot of play. I bet you do. I bet you do. I don't. Harry sneaks into Hogsmeade using his Marauders map and his uh, classic invisibility cloak. And then- Does he steal Neville's steals lollipop? Steals Neville's fucking lollipop. Come on, it's Neville. Why would you do that to that He's poor like, boy? mine. He's just enjoying a nice little lolly. Hi, him. kid who also doesn't have parents. Fuck your enjoyment. Hi, kid who gets picked on incessantly. <laughs> I will add to that. This is the worst thing Harry's ever done. Took Why his would lolly. He take poor Neville's lolly. And I assume it was pre licked. How often do you unwrap a lolly and leave it unlicked for any prolonged period of time? You no, know Neville, like, and could not wait to lick it. Straight that lolly. in. He was like, this is the one. He went good full thing Dementor on that fucking happened. thing. <laughs> oh, my. And then Harry was just like, moin. Anyway, Poor Neville. we cut to Ron so and Hermione. They're flirting over at the Shrieking Shack. Oh, no, you go in. You go in. Uh, hey, Weaselby. <laughs> why is he there? <laughs> this kid sucks. What? I love how it's taken three years for Malfoy to come up with Weaselby. Yeah, that's the best he could do. Hey, Weaselby. I was going to pay somebody to write my jokes, but I forgot. Stupid red hair, and you're a mudblood. That's all he came up with. Yeah. By the way, we got a lot of emails and messages of people thinking Steve was saying mug blood. Uh, I actually thought that a couple times too. I probably was, but just just like I don't think he ever thought it was mug blood. Did you? Right? No. It's just, I just some. I just slur sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> we just stutter. You know. Yeah. Some people do that to me in my TikTok videos. They're like, "Did you say blah blah blah?" And I'm like, "Probably." <laughs> I, I made know. that in six minutes when I'm supposed to be doing other things. 
It's just shit that happens, guys. It's, it's madness when you talk so much. It your, is. Your mouth can make weird noises. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't think about sometimes I think we, which I understand, I would totally call attention to it too if I heard it. But like we're, sometimes we record three or four of these in one day and it's like the seventh hour that you're hearing and Steve just doesn't give a fuck anymore. He's so, trying really hard. I'm literally, st- as we're talking right now, if you guys could see what's happening, I literally have a soundboard that I'm managing cameras that I'm managing over here, my fucking notes and IMDB opened over here. I'm going to misspeak sometimes. My mm-hmm. brain is in six and places. And he's at dumb once. as shit. And I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> so it's amazing he's <laughs> able to multitask at all. Um, but yeah, Malfoy jumps in and he, you know, calling Hermione slurs and making fun of Ron for no reason whatsoever. But he gets pottered. Uh, he does get pottered. He gets pranked for somehow Potter is able with an invisibility cloak to just beat the shit out of all these people without them touching him or noticing anything is amiss. At one point he pants one of them. Yes. He, he pulls his pants down and less than a second later, the kid who's like 20 feet away trips like how'd he get? There well, if it's so even worse than that. He's like spanning one guy. And then you see Malfoy 10 feet away, like get hit in the face and fall over. Yeah. Like, damn. Well, I just took that. Like maybe he used his wand and it was like, expect to face punch him. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, Malfoy is a coward. He runs off knocking over his buddies to get away. Cause this is also the shrieking shack. So they think it might be a ghost haunted. Yeah. Some kind of, uh, which w- s- evil spirit question. Sure. They go to school uh-huh. at Hogwarts. Yes. A school that is populated by a lot of ghosts. I was just thinking that, but this is an especially evil one. I think that's very presumptuous of them. None of them, none of, none of these are malevolent that they're familiar with, but this might be. I think that's presumptuous of them. Do you know the history of the Shrieking Shack? I know it's been a long time since you read the books. No. So what's really neat, this isn't, it's actually one of my like differences from the movie to the books. The Shrieking Shack was Lupin's hideout. He would, that's why the Whomping Willow was there. Uh, yeah, right? yeah, that does ring a bell. Now he would transform that. into the werewolf in the shack and mm-hmm. it's very painful and he would scream. That's why everybody's afraid of the Shrieking Shack is because it's actually Lupin that was in there going, ah! Yeah. Right? So that's, a, that's the whole story behind that. And I thought that was really actually clever, pretty neat. Uh, but yeah, he gets, uh, Malfoy gets pranked, gets run off. And then Hermione is smart enough to know that it was Harry. Ron's terrified that it was the ghost of the shack, which I think is some funny, like really, like a uh, subtle characterization because Ron's just standing there shivering and then Hermione's like, Harry, um, just something that I noticed that that was really cool. Uh, cause Ron's Can't du- fool Hermione. Ron is the Steve of that group. He really is <laughs> lovable, um, but dumb as shit. And then Hermione and to some credit to Ron, Hermione's dumb enough to think he's going to turn the Marauders map over to professor McGonagall. Aren't you Harry? <laughs> and then Ron's like, yeah, right along with his invisibility cloak. He got more cockneyed in my iteration. I like it. <laughs> Invisibility cloak. <laughs> Say all the syllables, Brits. Come on. <laughs> just kidding. Look what you do to your language. Just, <laughs> just do what you do. I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, Wait, if I'm the Ron of the group. Yes. Does that make you the Harry and Andy the Hermione? I think I am the Hermione. You're the Hermione. Yeah, I'm I'm smarter than so Andy Andy's for sure. Andy's the chosen one. <laughs> I'm just going by that alone. <laughs> just so you're smarter than Andy. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what else. All right. Andy would probably be better at a broom. Mm, yeah, I could see that. I could see him if be better at a broom. Him. Sure. Yeah. I'm okay. De- well, Andy's pretty scared of heights, but I'm just not athletic at all. Right. Andy has played soccer. So that's his Quidditch. Mm-hmm. 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 See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going with that. You're okay. Ron. I'm Hermione. Okay. That's which fair. means we... Uh, uh? So <laughs> do we... Okay. We have about as much chemistry as they do. Is, is this happening? <laughs> Live? Oh my God, is this happening right now? On the YouTube? Let me hold your hand when I get scared. No. The camera's not on yes. us right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like a... Yeah. I gen, I, for the audio listeners, I gingerly touched his cheek. You but did. I more poked his eye, actually. I'm more into Victor Crumb right now, so get off me. Oh, sorry. This isn't for a few years, Steve, until our, our, our romance will flower. Well, I look forward to several episodes of this show. But everybody on the show, uh, the listeners are all going to think that you should have gotten with Andy. Honestly, I get it. <laughs> Dang. Andy's a snack. <laughs> oh, wait, no, it's me. You should have gotten with Andy. You're Ron. That's right. <laughs> My point still stands. That's right. That's right. 
Uh, but anyway, after this, they, there's more. Uh, Harry sneaks into, uh, I forget what the bar is called, but the kids aren't allowed in there at this time. Um, the minister, Minister Fudge, the Minister of Magic shows up and he goes into the the bar with like, the, her name is what, Ro, was Mer, Rosmerta? Yeah, uh, I did write it down. R- Rosmerta, yeah. Yeah, Rosmerta. She says something about Sirius Black and it's like, oh, why Why would he come to Sirius Black in Ogsmead? Uh, why would he come here? What a load of Ogwash. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. So that's what calls his attention, right? Mm-hmm. He sneaks in there. You see this the, the tracks in the snow. There's more shrunken heads in there that kick out uh, Ron and, and Hermione. And then he calls them thick heads, which they're very upset about. Uh, and that's where Harry eavesdrops and finds out that Sirius Black told Voldemort, snitched on Lily and James Potter. He was their friend, and he is still and remains to this day, uh, as uh, Professor day. McGonagall says, Harry Potter's godfather. And then we cut to Harry crying, thinking about this info, like angry crying, right? He tells the gang, mm-hmm. and he's like, I'm, I hope he finds me. I'm going to kill him. Yep. Gets very violent, that Harry. We also learned that uh, Sirius Black destroyed Peter Pettigrew and- only, a Only left a finger rema- was what, rem- uh, what, what remained. Wow. I can't talk. That's okay, buddy. That was hard You're to say. Words. Yeah. Mug blood. Keep studying, man. Mug I mean- blood. <laughs> <laughs> this is the scene I was talking about at the transition where we see the snow melting into spring and the, the whomping willows shaking off all the ice and stuff. Um, Lupin again, training Harry alone, uh, just very, cause he's the main character and he's like, he realizes that he needs extra attention. Uh, he's showing him advanced magic, the Patronus charm, Expecto Patronum. Harry fails the first time, of course. And then he's like, that's okay, Harry. Even as the main character, you're bound to not get it on the first try. Have you ever seen Karate Kid? <laughs> and then- Next we're going to do waxing on and waxing off. They're using a boggart, um, which is a clever way to train him to fight Dementors. Um, and the the first time- when he fails, yeah, he was thinking of the first time he wrote a broom. That's right. Memory. The first time I wrote a broom is not a good enough happy memory. Because he's supposed to call recall a very happy memory to have the strength to do the spell. Powerful. Um, and then he's like, there's another. It's a funny scene because it's like, there's another memory. It's the ha- Well, it's the happiest I've ever felt ever by far by a mile. I don't know if that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it would? <laughs> I think it would, Harry. What the what the fuck's Why going on? Why didn't right you now? go with that to begin with? <laughs> and it does kind of work. They were able to put the thing back into the box, and then he gives him some chocolate and says, "I think we're done for the day." Because chocolate revitalizes you after a brush with the Dementor. Yeah. Um, but what memory was this very happy memory, Chris? Does he talk about it in this scene? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's right. It's uh, it's the memory of his uh, parents looking talking down and him. talking to him when he was a baby. I don't know if it's actually a memory at all, or if I just made it up. Well, clearly it works. So keep pretending. So keep going with that. <laughs> um, Here's a chocolate. We cut to Ronald who lost. It's weird calling him Ronald, but that has to be his name. Yeah. Uh, he lost Scabbers, his rat. And he thinks Crookshanks killed him. So he's arguing with Hermione and Hermione's defending her cat Crookshanks. And Hermione's then, very hurt by this. She is. She's like, get off my cat. Yeah. Which yeah, I understand. Ron. Like if I was saying Pippin ate my uh Baby. And I would be like, the baby deserved it. Have you seen Pippin? (laughs) I didn't eat the baby. I was very hungry (laughs) and it couldn't get away. It's just a baby. (laughs) You could make a new one. Uh, that's There's Pippin, only one Pippin. That's how Pippin talks. Hagrid I'm, is Pippin came up here because that's the voice I do. So he's like up here, like pet me. Got a T word. <laughs> uh, we cut to Hagrid telling the gang while he's skipping rocks in the lake how Lucius uh, Malfoy's dad has demanded Buck Buckbeak's death and has uh, succeeded in that for for hurting Draco. Um, and, and Ron, we cut back to Ron in the dormitory now, who's having a tap dancing spider nightmare. It's a really weird scene where he's like, oh, spiders, they're trying to make me tap dance. And then Harry's reading a book awake and he looks up at Ron and goes, tell him, Ron. You tell him, Ron. <laughs> Get those okay. spiders. Uh, but Ron never is fully so awake. Weird. <laughs> so it's such a weird scene. Uh, but this is where he's just looking is that at from the, the, is there like something like, is that kind no, of a nod to a book no, event or something? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. All right. Other than that, the fact that he fears spiders, which was alluded to when he was fighting the Boggart. Yeah. Uh, and I guess they were just trying to do goofy, like in uh, Step Brothers, when he's like, screw you, Leonard Nimoy, or I'll kill you, Leonard Nimoy. Like that kind of, that's that kind of scene. Um, Peter Pettigrew is on the Marauders map is what uh, Harry notices, uh, which I think is one of the biggest plot holes that people talk about. You know, wouldn't Fred and, Fred and George have seen Peter Pettigrew on the map every time 
Scabbers was in Hogwarts, right? Because mm-hmm. we can assume they had been using it. But would they know who that is? I, yeah, I think he pretty famously was murdered, right? If you grew up in the wizarding world. Um, yeah, but do you think Fred and George like memorize a guy who was the one, one person who was murdered by Voldemort or Sirius Black? You know what I mean? No, you're right, I guess. Like as a teen- People like, talk about that a lot though. Like wouldn't they have seen Peter Pettigrew on the map? But also how did Fred and George get the map? Do you, did they say in this movie? I don't remember. I don't think they say in this movie. Because I know Remus sure. is like, I don't know how in the bloody hell you would have gotten this. I think it's explained in, it's definitely explained in the book, but I don't remember what it is. It um, might be explained in one of the later movies. So how, Harry goes gallivanting to find Peter Pettigrew. There's a really cool kind of horror scene again where he's got his wand out all Lumos style. that light out. With all the paintings yelling at him. Come on, it's nighttime. We're Put trying to sleep out. here. Uh, Pettigrew walks right past him supposedly. Uh, and then Snape comes up. And before Snape is able to arrive, Harry says, uh, mischief managed, and then taps the paper, the parchment, and uh, uh, knocks to turn his wand off. And then Snape puts his lit wand in his face, and he's like, just like your daddy strutting about, (laughs) looking sexy as fuck. (laughs) Harry's like, what? My Uh, my daddy didn't strut, uh, and neither do I. He's really mouthy to Snape there. mm -hmm. And the, the, the... Marauder's map's really cool because if you try to force it to tell you, it's like, reveal your secrets. Uh, and it says, and I quote, Messrs. Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs offer their compliments to Professor Snape and request that he keep his abnormally large nose out of other people's business, uh, which <laughs> he makes Harry read to him. Uh, that, right at that moment when Snape's at his most outraged, Lupin shows up uh, and he says, here, Lupin, you're supposed to be a... Uh, an expert in dark magic. Look at this parchment. It's clearly bewitched. And he's like, no, it's obviously a joke map meant to insult anybody who tries to look at it. It's it's probably a Zonko product, even though he is in fact Mooney and one of the people that made this map. Mm -hmm. So he's defending Harry there. I thought that was neat. What a G. They don't talk about it in this movie at all, do they? Like, I don't think The Mooney, Padfoot, the whole group, like- are you supposed to just figure I think it out? They, they briefly allude to Padfoot later on with Sirius. And then you're supposed to put it together that Peter was Wormtail. Yeah. And Prongs is his dad, the stag. Yeah. But I they don't they don't directly call attention to it for sure. My memory is that the friend group was uh Remus, Sirius, James, and Peter. Uh, and that they all became Animagi to help Lupin feel better about being infected with lycan- the, the lycanthropy, right? Mm-hmm. He's a werewolf, so they all want to turn into animals with him. Um, what a good group. And then the picture yells at Snape as well, which is really funny. What's that light out? <laughs> um, Why is this hallway so cluttered tonight? Jesus. And then we cut to Lupin and Harry again, alone. Um, and then he's mad about the map. He chastises Harry for walking around alone. I'm astounded you didn't hand it in. Something like this falls in the hands of Sirius Black. He could find you instantly, right? Um, but as Harry's leaving, he says, hey, I don't think that map works, Professor Lupin. Uh, it shows people that are definitely dead. <laughs> and Lupin's like, like who? Oh. Well, the queen. Uh, I saw Michael Jackson on there once and Peter Pettigrew. And <laughs> Lupin's like, Whoa. Michael Jackson? <laughs> don't- the king of pop? Here at Hogwarts. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and then we cut. That's a dangerous thing, place for him to be. <laughs> That's like putting dementors in. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> Back to Trelawney's class again. Um, and this is when Trelawney shits on Hermione. I knew it was the moment I saw you. You didn't possess the art of divination. You have the this the heart of an old crusty maid and like goes on and on and on you'll die alone yeah. no one will love you except your cats a sense of humor as brittle as the books you so desperately cling to something like that uh and hermione storms off and then ron's like she's gone mental <laughs> dude you suck ron, ron sucks ron sucks uh but she knocks off the crystal ball as she's leaving, Harry goes to pick it up. So he stays later than the rest of the class, brings it back in. Uh, and that's when he kind of sees Sirius's face uh, looming in the crystal ball. And then Treeliney creeps up and says, he who betrayed his friends whose heart rots with murder shall be free once more. Innocent blood shall be spilt. The servant shall find its master. And, and then be she- Be reunited once more. Yeah. <laughs> Did she write it down too? Yes. Uh, and then she has no memory of what she just said. Like, oh, Harry, sorry. What'd you say? 
Oh, what's up? So Trelawney does have like legitimate divination powers. She, Interesting. Trelawney's awesome. She's very cool. And she's Emma Thompson, who's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the gang uh, gets to see an executioner sharpening an ax, which is very fucking medieval, don't you think? Like it's, a, it's a, like, a like a literal a, hooded executioner. That was like an. That wasn't just an axe. That's an axe they have in like Resident Evil games. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a almost a scimitar. Yeah, no, a halberd. That's the medieval weapon I'm thinking of. It's a, a pole axe with a, a giant. Thestral. It's a pole axe, is what it is, yeah, Steve. I like medieval stories, so I know a lot about medieval weaponry. Steve, <laughs> I'll teach you about a halberd sometime. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, so they walk by him. Then you hear Draco like, father says I can keep the hippogriff's head. <laughs> like he just sucks real I bad. I don't think Lucius has that authority. <laughs> eh, apparently he does. He got everybody to execute the poor hippogriff. Hey, can I have that, uh, that hippogriff's head? What are you guys going to do with the head? Just wondering. I'm going to give it to my boy. He's going to mount it. I don't know what he's going to do with it. Uh, you know, teenagers, I don't want to even know what he plans to do with it. <laughs> but he wants to. Uh, Hermione almost fucks up Draco. She's like, you sniveling. I forget what she says, but she pulls out her wand. He's terrified. He's whimpering. Uh, and then Ron's like, come on, he's not worth it. And, <laughs> and then she clocks him. Punches him. Love it. Uh, and Hagrid and Harry are looking at Buckbeak in the next scene. Um, Hagrid found scabbers, by the way, he put him in like a sugar bowl. Uh, and then someone is throwing rocks into Hagrid's hut, breaks one of the other bowls, hits Harry in the head. By doing that, Harry turns around and looks out and sees that the Cornelius Fudge and the executioner are almost to the hut with Dumbledore, of course. Um, cause Dumbledore wanted to be there with Hagrid. He did. He's, he's very supportive. Yeah, he's a good dude. And, ha but also ha Dumbledore is there because He's instrumental in them having time to sneak Buckbeak away, even though he knows it's going to happen in the future. He's a fucking genius, that Dumbledore. Yep. Um, Hagrid covers something what I can assume is an illegal animal that he doesn't want the ministry to see. Did you notice that? Yeah. He throws a blanket over like a, a Sarlacc looking ass thing. And then um, that's a Star Wars reference for you, Steve. Oh, thanks. I appreciated it. Uh, Hermione thought she saw something when they're hiding behind the pumpkins. Uh, and then they see Buckbeak being executed. Uh, right at that moment, Scabbers bites Ron. And he's like, ow, he bit me. There's something off about this rat. Something a little weird about something this rat in this particular this movie. Typically, it doesn't do this. Uh, uh, and Typically, then, Scabbers just hangs out in the background yeah. and with no <laughs> in, portent or intent at all. But this year, he's being a real bitch. Weird. <laughs> He chases Scabbard to the uh, Scabbers to the Whomping Willow. Um, what does he say? It's the Grim. They see the dog. It's the Grim, and he the Grim attacks Ron, grabs him by the leg, drags him underneath the Willow, and then Hermione and Harry get whomped by the Willow when they're trying to get to take Ron. There's like a fight scene with the Whomping Willow. Mm -hmm. They get like walloped, yeah, by this tree. Poor Hermione's getting like slung around. Slung yeah, she's around. up there like ah. Harry goes uh, full on jinkies because he drops his glasses. Full on jinkies. He's, he goes full Velma. Can't, I can't see anything. see without my glasses. He's blind as shit. He cuts to his POV. It's like, damn, you need those things. Those are prescription. You can see uh, nothing. Yeah. I mean, I don't have, I have perfect vision. I don't like to brag, but it's 2020. I can literally see everything far away and up close really clearly. Right. So I can't, ima <laughs> I can't imagine, but like. Wow, this is like a thick, like he should have Coke bottle. He should have tree linings on with that kind of vision. He can't see anything. Anyway, there's a secret tunnel. Harry slides perfectly down it from the willow. And then Hermione's like, oh, that's a neat trick and does it right after him. Uh, it turns out the tunnel leads to underneath the shrieking shack. Weird. Is that uh, like the Shake Shack? It is. Hmm. It's a very popular destination. Hmm. There's one in Times Square. Hmm. And uh, the Animagus Sirius Black is in there, is what Ron points out immediately. The door closes very, um, um, what's the word? What's the word? It means like scary, forebodingly. Foreboding. It's like that. That's not the word I was looking Ominous. for. But, uh, ominously. There you go. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Who's Steve, dumb as shit now? Good old thesaurus Steve yeah. over there. And then Lupin shows up right behind him. And there's like, by the way, I think, Steve, this scene is the best scene in the entire Harry Potter series. It's a good one. I love it so much. There's turn after turn. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's here. He's here to save us. Oh, he's a bad guy too. Oh, they're both good guys maybe. Ah, Snape's here now. It's just it's fucking relentless. And there's some of the best actors in England, which means the world, right? Like yep. it's just like classically theater trends. actors. Oh my God. It's yeah. Alan Rickman, David Thewlis, Gary Oldman, I can't get excited enough about how much I love this fucking scene. 
I did 12 years of waiting. Like, oh, oh yeah. Man. When at oh, one point Lupin's like, just wait a second, Sirius. I have waited 12 years in Azkaban. <laughs> Terrible rendition of <laughs> Gary Oldman. I, but I love the Azkaban. Azkaban. <laughs> and the guy who plays Peter Pettigrew is very famous as well. I'm giving him short shrift here, uh, but he's been in a ton of shit. He's always very excellent. I think he's in, isn't he the sidekick in um, The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise? Uh, Timothy Spall is his name. Um, yeah, but he's in a ton of shit. Yeah. Uh, he's in Sweeney Todd, Vanilla Sky. He's he, in a bunch of stuff. I know he's in Last Samurai. He's in Spencer. Oh, he was the bad guy in Spencer. He was oh, the, yes, yes, yes. He was the dude that was always like upper butt. Like, yep. like, um, close your windows. You make terrible nosh. <laughs> you make terrible nosh. That's what he said. But anyway, there's plot twist after plot twist. This is such an incredible scene. Ultimately, we find out that Sirius Black is innocent and Peter Pettigrew is alive and well. Uh, and he's been scabbers the entire time for the last 12 years. I love that line because <laughs> Gary Oldman's kind of, he's lost his mind being in yeah, Azkaban that yeah. long uh, somewhat. And there's a part where Ron's like, oh, he couldn't be. He's been in my family for 12 years. 12 years. Yes. <laughs> exactly how long I've been in prison, <laughs> motherfucker. How long lifespan for a rat. Yeah. <laughs> God, I let his teeth are all fucking rotted out and shit. Like yeah. I'm assuming he can go to a wizard dentist and fix that cheerio. Mm -hmm. Does that mean fast? <laughs> fix that cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Those teeth aren't a spot of bother. They're not that concerned over there anyway about those things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a common joke. It is. It is. I didn't mean anything. <laughs> I've never been there. We already insulted so many of them by saying British meaning everything. They didn't make there. it this far into the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Snape shows up, like I said, the Expelliarmus that he does on Sirius merely knocks the wand out of his hand. But the Expelliarmus that Harry does on Snape knocks the shit out of him. He flies across the room. Yeah, it does. A very accomplished, battle-hardened wizard gets thrown by a child into the bed and knocked out for several minutes. Mm -hmm. Which, why wouldn't he be? Um, Pedigree tries to escape. One thing that bothers me. And I'll just say it right now in case I forget. So Pettigrew, when he first transforms into the actor, he's still, he's been a, a rat for 12 years. So he's got like rat-like like tendencies. Residual, yeah. I love that. But he's fully residual clothed. Residual rat, rat king. Rat, I don't want king. the man to be naked. Yeah. I don't want the man to be naked. But when he turns back into a rat later, sneakily, when the Lupin turns into a werewolf, he falls into his pile of clothes as a rat. That doesn't make any fucking oh, yeah, sense. That's a good point. That doesn't make any fucking sense. He should have took his clothes with him or been naked. Maybe he can just apparate clothes. Ah. Ah. I just think they couldn't show uh, 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 a naked pedigree. No one wants to see Timothy Spall's dong. With one of his fingies missing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, any who's old, all that shit happens. A lot of stuff transpires very quickly, right? So Snape's uh, unconscious, but pedigree, ultimately they try to kill him. Lupin and, and um, uh, Sirius, their plan is to kill him. And Harry stops him, not only because he's an honorable person, but because nobody's going to be here to uh, cleanse Sirius Black's name mm -hmm. if they kill him, right? It's Clear just going to be name. a murderer once again, twice over. So they all exit the the Shrieking Shack through the willow, which is weird. It would have been safer. They just walked out in a hog's meat and was like, hey, cops, we need you. <laughs> but they climb back out to where nobody can help there them. There are no cops, Chris. There are dementors. That's true. And Lupin uh, very, very unfortunately forgot that tonight was a full moon, even though you'd think his Dang whole it. life would revolve don't around hate it knowing when, when that's going to happen. Don't you just hate it when the moon just sneaks oh, up on you like that? Dang, goodness. there it is. Ah, this was a real bad day for this. Right at this moment, as the, no less. I, I knew it, too. I knew it. <laughs> Th this is on me. I'm sorry, gang. Did you take your potion, Remus? No. I, I didn't. I did not. <laughs> I did not. I don't like to. It makes me gassy. <laughs> it does. It makes me gassy. Um, any hoozle. He turns into a werewolf, meaning Lupin, interrupts the whole thing, allows Pettigrew to escape. He turns into a rat and runs away. Snape comes out right as the fucking werewolves is attacking. And he's like, Potter, I'm going to, oh God, it's werewolf. Oh no shit. But then he does start protecting the children, uh, which I thought was really neat. I mean, he's, Snape's a good guy. He just... Yeah, He's been through a lot. This is a good uh, movie for Snape because he protects the children here, but also earlier when he and Dumbledore are talking about Harry and the 
in the uh, the Great Hall, he's like, should we, we need to tell Harry Potter about like the danger he's yes. in. This is a bad, he needs to know. He's a little greasy loner boy, yeah. spiteful man, but not a bad person at his no, heart, no. at his core. Um, and then Sirius turns into, I guess, cause he doesn't have a wand, right? He's only able to turn into Padfoot and help attack the werewolf. At no point does he get bit or he would also be a werewolf, which I found a little unbelievable, but they do some doggy wrestling. Uh, and then there's some howling off in the distance, right? As Harry's about to get mauled. Oh. Cause Harry doesn't, I don't know where Harry's wand is, but he decides to just throw rocks at the werewolf. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's some howling in the distance. And we learned in that class with professor Snape as a substitute that they respond well to other of their kind. Mm -hmm. So he runs off to find the source of the howling saving. This is why Snape told them all to research werewolves. Cause he wanted them to be safe. I told y'all page 390. Oh, it is. Yeah. Or, or was he trying to protect them or trying to out Remus spitefully? I don't think. That has to be mutually exclusive to one another. <laughs> I bet it was to spite Lupin, but I think you're it's, right. It's definitely to spite, but I also think Snape truly also, because he wants that job, right? And he's not a bastard. He Well, he is a bastard, but he's, he doesn't want these kids to get killed. He's occasionally a bastard. Doesn't want them to die, but he does like them when they're maimed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so uh, the, the werewolf runs off and then what else happens? Um, Sirius is wounded the Dementors arrive to, to suck the soul out of Sirius. And then Harry, because he's trying to help, he has a Patronus successfully, but not a very strong one. It kind of makes them bounce a little bit and then it just pisses them off. So they start sucking Harry's soul out as well. This is just the most fun we've had all evening. Oh my, mm -mm, two for oh one special. Goodness. I was thinking of turning in early today, but I'm so glad. I'm I glad I know. showed up for the suck party. <laughs> I love a suck fest. <laughs> I'm here for it. Anybody got the fish bowl? We got to put our keys in there first. <laughs> Harry uh, sees some kind of stag-like Patronus-y looking thing. And what he thinks is his dad. He wakes up in the hospital in the infirmary, uh, Madame Pomfrey's neck of the woods. Dumbledore points out that they... Uh, uh, won't believe adolescent wizards because Hermione and the gang try to tell him, like, hey, Sirius is innocent. We've got hard evidence, meaning we made some stuff up potentially. We, we know some things. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dumbledore's like, well, they're not going to believe three adolescent wizards, unfortunately. He's yeah. very whimsical about everything. He's very Dumbledore about the whole thing. Very the, wizard, the wizarding judicial system definitely exercises caution. Exercise caution. Uh, and he basically implies heavily that they should go back in time and save Sirius. He's in the the, the topmost dark tower, whatever he says, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then only Hermione knows what he's talking about, though. And then when he leaves the room, be back by the seventh bell or whatever. Three turns ought to do it. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, we keep doing the Richard Harris one, but it's Michael Gambon, like, eh, three turns, that'll do it. Uh, three lines of blow. That's what I did. <laughs> three turns to do you. And uh, Ron doesn't know what's going on. She's like, well, you can't come because you're uh, uh, you got a hobbly foot now. Mm -hmm. And she puts a necklace around Harry. And she's like, how do you think I've been getting all these classes? And so she's had a time turner. McGonagall gave it to her because it's a really incredibly irresponsible school. And so why not give like dark, insanely complicated, magical items uh, that have, as Hermione says later, uh, made terrible things happen to many wizards to a 13 year old girl so she can get to extra classes. Yeah. Just so she can, Why not? you know, go to a couple classes at the same time, you know? She's been manipulating time. That's how she's been getting in and out of all these different classes. Uh, so they go back in time to the start uh, of uh, the whole scene where the hippogriff was executed, right right before yeah, she right punched before Malfoy. Uh, so she watches them herself punch Malfoy. And then basically over the next 20 minutes, we find out that every weird thing that's happened behind the scenes has in fact been a different Harry and Hermione from a different timeline. They're the ones that threw the rocks. Yep. And Hermione they saved was the one that did the, Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also saved Buckbeak. Yeah. So earlier when we saw Hermione kind of um, put her face into Ron's shirt to not see the hippogriff being sliced, it was actually just a gourd. It was a pumpkin the whole time. Buckbeak was never injured. Nope. Nope. I do love how the executioner's like, well, I got to cut, cut something. I got to cut something. What if that was like a magical creature that looks like a pumpkin? It and Hagrid, hogger. you just hear Hagrid out in the background. Ah! <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That was my pumpkin true. That was Charlie. He's actually an old wizard. Oh, he wouldn't hurt nobody. <laughs> he wouldn't hurt nobody. He was just a big pumpkin boy. I mean, he's killed 37 men, but uh, I don't know why my mind's sling blade. That's my Hagrid. I reckon I ain't got to kill nobody today. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. He likes mustard and biscuits. 
That's a Sling Blade reference. I don't know if Everyone's have... watched Sling Blade. Everybody's seen Sling Blade. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and that's the end of the fucking movie, pretty much. We see a bunch of timey wimey. <laughs> <laughs> we see a bunch of timey wimey things. Um, and uh, oh, there is a funny part where Harry is alone with Hermione for a second because there's multiple periods where they have to wait for the thing that they know is about to transpire to happen. Like when they're waiting outside the hut uh, and then later when they're waiting outside the Whomping Willow. So they're basically just chilling while everything that we saw earlier, like the best scene in the history of Harry Potter transpires below them. They got to watch that as well. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, Hermione, it's crazy. I, I, I swore I saw my dad. That's who saved me from the Dementors. And Hermione says, but, but Harry, your dad's dead. <laughs> and then Harry goes, I know. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, is this real? Is this what's happening right now? <laughs> but Harry, your dad's dead as shit. Dead as shit. Literally, probably never loved you. Well, I mean, we can't say for sure, but he says sure. he did. But I would assume. <laughs> Just a really funny scene, I thought. But I actually thought as far as like Christopher Nolan, he twists or whatever, right? This was actually pretty, played off pretty well. Um, because I actually forgot for a second, you know, when I'm watching it this morning, it's been a few years. And uh, I was like, wait, who threw the rocks, right? Somebody, oh, that's right. It's, you know, I was like, it's, it's pretty neat. I thought, I thought it was done well mm -hmm. as far as timey-wimey things go. What do you think? You're pretty well, you're a huge sci-fi guy. Pretty, do you think it was a well-executed timey-wimey? Uh, I think it's executed fine. It's competent, sure. Um, it, it is it's not a mind-blowing This maybe. is the most poorly paced section of the movie. You think so? Yeah, because you're going back, you're reliving it, and the characters are also like, well- Guess we just sit here. Yeah. Right about now, they're finding Peter Pettigrew, I guess. Mm. Mm. Oh, I there's, oh, there's Snape. Yeah, you're oh, about to shoot him. He's looking mad. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's not terrible. Um, and it is, I do like the cleverness of like, oh, they threw the rocks. Oh, it was Hermione. Like, I think that's really scripted well. It's just, I, there's just a little trouble with the pacing of it all. One thing that I think could, it's a tiny thing, uh, but I think would have made it so much more. It's, it's so tiny. I'm so dumb for pointing it out. But there's a point where the first time through, um, when they're behind the pumpkins, Hermione looks back and then says, I thought I saw, never mind. And they just go. And then when you see it played out from the other timeline, you realize that she thought she saw herself. Mm -hmm. She ducked it though. She thought she saw herself. And I think that line should have been said by Ron because Hermione's very smart. She actually is in possession of the time turner. So I think it's much more likely that she'd be like, I definitely saw myself, mm -hmm. you know, whereas Ron would have been like, I thought I saw, oh, never mind. There's two of them now? Yeah. Oh, bullish. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like if he saw himself, he'd definitely just shake it off and not talk about it. Mm -hmm. So they should have had him say that line. Um, but yeah, I thought it was very well made, very competent. I My liked favorite thing about the, the going through and replaying the end of the movie again is we get to find out that Dumbledore wants brandy. Yes. Dumbledore's a brandy man. There's a cool line uh, where he's like, I, I have a small, I, I would like to have a small glass of brandy. And then you hear Hagrid go, you won't find no small glasses in here. Cause he's a giant <laughs> a, but also a drunk. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> um, I call them buckets. <laughs> there's literally a bucket, but I love that scene with Dumbledore because then he comes out uh, and they almost get spotted with Buckbeak. And he's like, oh, look over here at the mountains. That was actually installed back in my day by John, whatever he's saying. He's distracting everybody. I love the idea that he knew they'd be there, even though it's the old timeline. So he's yeah. so fucking smart that he anticipated giving this task to Hermione and the gang later. And so would have to, at that precise moment, like that's how powerful of a wizard he is and how smart he is. Mm -hmm. It's like the time when he looked directly at Harry in the invisibility cloak. Um, he's just a godlike figure in this series. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a, it's cool. Yeah. No, it's really, really fun. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I had to watch this whole ending sequence twice. Cause the first time I watched you it, had, I was a Hagrid sized glass. I, I had a Hagrid sized glass of brandy. Uh, <laughs> actually, it was rum and Mio. Um, Ooh. But uh, <laughs> that's her recipe for preventing a hangover. Yeah. Uh, and water, because it's water, rum, and Mio. Um, but so, like, I woke up this morning and looked at my notes for the last 20 minutes, like, what is this? <laughs> uh, oh, no. Because oh, no. it was a lot of like, oh, look, it's serious. 
Buck B. <laughs> Candy man. The end. Like that's not what happened. So, Buck B. So when I went back and rewatched it, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't write anything about Buck Beat saving them from uh, from Lupin because there's that chase scene in the woods that Lupin chases him. For yeah, a while. Buck Beat hops back in. Still got the chain on his neck. I we I really wanted them to take that off. Yeah. It's like, hey, he probably hates that. Uh, and then they bust um, Sirius, Sirius out. Out, of, out of prison. With Buck Beak. And Sirius is like, oh my God, Harry Potter, your eyes. Mm-hmm. Tells him about his mommy's I'm eyes. Thinking about those eyes for 12 years in prison. <laughs> I'm such a dork. What I thought of was when she walked up to the door that he's in prison behind, she says like Bombardo or something. And Bombardo, blo- yeah. Blows it up. Or Bombarda. Wouldn't Alohomora have been a great time just to unlock the door? Why'd she have to blow the shit out of it? Because uh, we just learned about extreme incantations. That's true. I do like, you know, a variety of spells. I'm always bitching about that in these series. But because after this point, we pretty much only ever hear Avada Kedavra, Expecto Patronum, and uh, Expelliarmus. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the only battle magic anybody uses. Some Crucio, if you're, uh, what's her name? Bellatrix Lestrange, mm-hmm. my, one of my favorite characters. Uh, but any hoozle. That's the end of the movie. I know it seems. Yeah, Lu- Lupin leaves. He's decided he, he to resigns. resign because yep. um, uh, he doesn't want to bring any smoke to Dumbledore. And the position's cursed. It, it, yeah, and he looks worse for wear. He looks like he had a rough night. I've looked worse, Harry. Yep. I One time, I once did an eight ball. <laughs> I was trying to smuggle it into a Russian airport, and it burst in my ass and went into my bloodstream. And anyway, it's a long story. Long story. <laughs> I that's, my, that's my bugger. <laughs> <laughs> um, they lie to Ron about where they've been. It's which not I thought the was moon. It's an eight ball of cocaine. <laughs> Just in an ass. <laughs> uh, and then, and then the last, so this is the dumbest thing in the movie. All right. And I want to see if you agree with me. So the final scene of the movie, they're all like, Harry, Harry. Oh my gosh. You're so lucky, Harry. Everyone gives you things. And Harry's like, what would I get this time? Oh, and Ron's like, oh, I'm sorry. I opened it. Oh yeah, it, it was poorly wrapped, and it's <laughs> and he's got a firebolt, a new broom. Yeah. It's apparently the fastest broom in the world. And they're like, who gave it to you? And it's implied that it's from Sirius because the feather from the Griffin, yeah, the hippogriff. And so the last movie ends with, or the last scene is Harry flying around Hogwarts, and then it does a with freeze, the freeze frame. frame. I hated it. <laughs> the freeze frame is so bad. <gasps> ah. It's like the it's like the Dementor, like the image that they have when they're sucking their soul out. Yeah, it's kind of what it looked like because it's a little blurred. Yeah, because he's moving. I wonder fast. if that's on purpose, like a happy version of the Dementor kiss. Maybe. And the Dementors are just like, oh, I'm just happy for him. He got I, a, he's got a new Zoomy brain. Oh, look at him. He's going so fast. I oh, wouldn't even be able to catch him. Oh, you know what? I ain't going to try to catch him. <laughs> I do want to kiss him. I do want to kiss him, though. By that, I mean kill him. Uh, this is the other big difference from the books. Uh, the other, So they didn't talk about the, the, the history of the Shrieking Shack with Lupin. But one of the other big differences from the books is that Harry actually receives the Firebolt like mid-book, not at the end. Um, and they confiscate it because they think it might be from Sirius and some kind of like booby trap. Yeah. Like he'll get hurt trying to ride it or something like that. So they just tax it on at the end of the movie, but it was a gift he had received uh, before he knew who Sirius was. He mm-hmm. was trying to be nice. I don't know where he gets all the money. Scary bank. <laughs> he probably robbed it. Maybe, or maybe, well, his family maybe is as, very wealthy, the Blacks. Oh, that's but, right. The Blacks are very healthy. But it's like, why would he, how would he have access to money? I was going to say, maybe as Harry's godfather, he has access to the trust. <laughs> he bought it with his own money. <laughs> He's like, Harry, I got you a gift with your own money. <laughs> I also bought myself some clothes and a few hookers. I needed it. <laughs> On all accounts. I was all stopped up for 12 years, boy. 12 years. 12 years thinking about those eyes. But don't worry. I used caution, as Dumbledore always <laughs> tells me. Good. <laughs> As Dumbledore always Str- says, strap up, wrap that rascal. <laughs> <laughs> Use caution. <laughs> but that was the Prisoner of Azkaban. I name. love it so much. Thank you all for tuning in um, and uh, give us more requests. We've got a, uh, an episode coming out in a couple of days from a patron. Uh, there's certain tiers of the Patreon that allows us to, uh, allows them to choose a movie for us to watch. So that's mm-hmm. what's coming up on Wednesday. But first. And also, if you are a patron at a certain level, you can be a part of the Discord. Yes. You get to interact with us. Family. The, the Discord's always popping off. We've got... Some exclusive questions from listeners on the Discord. Oh, that's right. I almost, uh, Casey did all that hard work, damn it. How dare I? Uh, That's why I'm here. Drop these questions on us, Steve. All right, we got some questions. The first one comes in from Ghost. Ghost. Ghost asks, what would a boggart turn into if you saw one? Mm, That's a, should I go funny or should I go dark? 
Oh, I kind of want to hear both. <laughs> well, I, I can't always predict a funny. <laughs> I got nothing right now. I don't know what my biggest fear is. It might be relapse. Mm -hmm. Um, so the boggart might just turn into a, just a big old bowl of heroin. I don't know. <laughs> like kind of much like lupins. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that would probably, that's one of my biggest fears is just drinking again and, you know, going back down that path. What about you, Steve? Uh, uh the aliens from signs. Probably. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably them. Legit fear. Yeah. It's horrifying. Uh, did you, what was your funny? I didn't think of one. Oh, okay. I just assumed I would go funny, you know? Okay. Well, but Amanda, I didn't think of anything. Amanda has the next question. She asked, Hi, what, Amanda. What people, things, places in the movies looked exactly like how you pictured them as you were reading them in the books and what was not even close from how you pictured when reading the books? See, I haven't read the books since I was, I think the last time I read through all of them, I was probably 14 or 15. So maybe, I don't know, whenever the last book came out. So maybe 16 or 17, but mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long time because I'm an old man now. I, I do don't remember recall, thinking that- um, Don't recall. The, the famous newspaper of Sirius Black, like screaming and yelling. I do remember thinking like, wow, I, that's how I pictured that. I don't know why. Well, you knew. Like it was well done. Cause I think they, they really did a good job casting uh, Gary Oldman and making him look like that character. Yes. He did, they did a great job with all of that. I'm trying to think because at the beginning of every chapter, they had these little pictures, these little illustrations. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, and I think the newspaper thing might have actually been in there, mm -hmm. but I can't remember. That's why I was hesitating for so long. I'm not for sure. Um, but all in all, set design wise, all that stuff, they did a phenomenal job. Um, but again, I've seen the movies way more. T well, not that's not true, but I've seen them so many more times recently than I've read the books. And so my headcanon is almost movie stuff more than anything mm -hmm. as far as like what things look like. Well, Buckbeat looks like the the hippogriff That is the definitely cover. something there is on the cover, right? Yeah, yeah. So they had that going for them. Um, I, you know, I, I'll say what I don't think. Hogsmeade is nothing like what I pictured it. I'll say that. Oh no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Hogsmeade is way lamer in the movie. Than yes, it doesn't it. seem, even, I wouldn't even go there. I'd be like back with Harry. Like, I don't know, man. Like, why do we need a permission slip to go here? Sonless layer we're up to no good. Let's go do something. It's just something. like a hundred foot long road with some random shops. Yeah. It's like, cool. a, it's, it's like Gatlinburg. It's like, eh, it sucks. Oh <laughs> I hate Gatlinburg. <laughs> right? Uh, okay. So our last question comes from Jeter, the Jedi. Jeter asks, who do you think is the best director of the Harry Potter movies? Not outside of the series, but who directed the best for Harry Potter? Alfonso Cuaron, easily. Not even a question. Mm. I, I think there's an argument to be, to be made for David Yates, mm -hmm. uh, who did the last couple. What do you think, Steve? Uh, well, again, I haven't seen, I've only seen these movies once. So I'm only basing this off of the last. So you're, you're only going Chris Columbus or Alfonso right yeah, now? Right now. So, so, you know, let's circle back to that question for me once we watch them all. But as of right now, it's Alfonso. Like You're in the Fonz camp. Yeah. I'm all about the Fonz, baby. All about the Fonz. Yeah. But yeah, that was the last question from Discord. And you can join the question uh, section as well. You don't have to be a member of the Discord. Uh, we don't want to gatekeep that. So you feel free to email us. It's jeremyandthingspod or gmail at gmail.com uh, with any questions you have. We're going to be covering Obvi, uh, Goblet of Fire next, uh, and then Order of the Phoenix and so on and so forth. We might have to double up one or two weeks just to, to get it all done before Last of Us or let it bleed into Last of Us maybe and just have a, an extra couple episodes or whatever. So sure. we'll see. We can do what we want. But if you have questions for those movies, that's what's coming up soon. But that's all the time we have for right now. Uh, my name is Chris. And I'm Steve. And this was Streaming Things. Happy streaming. Here's all the new patrons that we got in November. New, new. New, new. In the Try Before You Deny Man uh, category, we have Emmy. Thank you, Emmy. New to Marty B's VIP section, we have Carl DiMartino and Sean Kerrigan. Oh, we know where the party happens in the VIP section. Mm -hmm. In the Chocolate Pudding Producers, we have Laura Hardwick, Adam Jett, Jane McMillan, Katie, Alexandra Cordova. Good luck. 
Silja Hiljet Skadshim. I'm Nailed it. very sorry. I, that's obviously uh, you know, Icelandic, maybe? Maybe. Or Norwegian, maybe? Maybe. Anyway, sorry for butchering that, but I tried really hard. I think it's ruder to not try. That's my yeah, opinion. Yeah, try before you deny. Yes, right. try before you deny. What if Silja Hiljet Skadshim is a little girl, man? <laughs> <laughs> Cheyenne Bragg, Aaron Carr, Christy Ellens, Aaron, Toby Sands, Keenan Chu, Victor Weaver, Tina Gomez, SJ Dog 21, Kaylin Swift, Sharon Linden, Josh Seidel, Zoe Schubert, Andrew Diaz, Jada Haley, Nick and Aaron B. Thank you, Nick and Aaron B. And everyone else you said. I don't know why I specifically said their name. Mm -hmm. And in the Friends Don't Lie producers, we have Megan Stolarski, April Palmore Sullivan. Thank you so much. And Friends Don't Lie. And we've got some people who upgraded what? newest to the Try Before You Deny producers is Jeanette Murphy. Hey. And and recently joining Marty's B and recently joining Marty B's VIP section is Jacob Schleer and Trisha Bueller. This section is open to all. Bueller. 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 Trisha Bueller. I'm sure I've she's never heard that joke. Never at all. No, never. There's no way in hell. <laughs> she's she's, no one's ever been that clever. Now she's going to hear it four times this month. At least. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to everybody. Woo! Woo!